Set that guy up there. Very nice. Let's go set the stream up. We'll see if we have a lot of coughing tonight. Hopefully not. <laughs> Ooh, this music's nice. Another ASMR stream. I'm not going to be shouting or anything. What's up, Jorge Trejo? We'll do that uh, default thumbnail for now until Mr. Jo uh, Mr. Mike Side updates to the regular thumbnail. Okay. Now we'll talk about what's going on. <coughs> oh, there's a cough. <coughs> Oof. Disney 100 Weiss. We have Star Wars Weiss restock. We have Lugia Break. We have, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Ultra Prism Break. Live Card Shop. Think it'll be a slow day today? It is Tuesday. Tuesday is a slow day. Yesterday was real slow. Man, it was slow. Let me um, take a look at our other Disney product and see how close it is. What's today again? So, so Tuesday. Okay, give me a second. So, 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 so. We ordered on April 9th. This guy hasn't even shipped yet. That's no good. All right, here's one. So this is slated to arrive on the 25th. Uh, it's still in Japan. Okay, so we got one still in Japan. How about this one? This one's not shipped. How about this one? This one is shipped, and it is in Japan. So we are not close to a Disney restock. All right. Okay, well, I'm here, guys. What's up? How's it going, guys? So another ASMR stream. I'll be talking quiet. Haven't been coughing as much. Did you guys know that? Yeah. Oh, great. Here we go. Look at How's it zero lane? Uh, yeah, I should check up on that one too, but it's not here. I can tell you that much. Now you want those Azura lane sexy girls. We got Sneaker Bunko. That also has sexy signature cards. Um, Azura, huh? Let's look up Azura. It says we ordered back on April 3rd. Should be very close. <laughs> oh, they didn't ship till April 9th. But it's in the US it's in the USA. Okay, there you go. Yeah, it's in the USA. So it's getting close. Very good. I pulled two gold Giratinas and two knights out of the legendary bird tens. You silly Billy. Alright. Well, I'm ready for a nice stream today, guys. How are you? Silver Poker Lugia. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven spots in here. Thirteen spots remain. Oh, I have not pinged a score. That's why I haven't done. Let me go ping the score, guys. Okay, give me a minute. I ought to have like a Twitter or something. Okay. Okay. There we go. Very nice. <coughs> Here, I gotta have a cough right now. All right. So I feel much better now. I'm sending them in with my Arceus I've been holding for grading along with the Charizard sticker you have of mine. Oh, sounds very good. Boy, it's warm in this room. Feels hot. Yeah, it's nice and warm. Looks like the small slab, the mini break, is this guy, Alteria 10. Six spots in the Alteria 10. Hey guys, what's going on? Says SoCal Canyon. How's it going, man? 
how is it going? What do you guys think? Slow night? It's Tuesday and Monday was slow. Usually a sign that Tuesday will also be slow. In fact, things if, if everyone's out of money, we won't pick up until Wednesday or Thursday. Justin Morris says, send my slabs. Justin Morris. What is... Did I make an agreement with Justin Morris? Send my slabs. Justin Morris. What is he talking about? Oh, he's one of the guys who returned, isn't he? All right, give me a second. Let me log in here. All right. He's one of the guys who just got returned. There we go. Pokemon is dead. Pokemon is dead, says these nuts. I was just shopping for Pokemon cards, and they're all at unbelievable prices. They're like the opposite of dead. Oh, Justin's living out here in Missouri. That's cool. I am living in Missouri as well. Okay, let me grab his email. All right. And I don't know how many slabs he had, so I will bring the weight up. Mm -hmm. I'm just teasing, sis. <laughs> Tease nuts. I think the idea of collecting, collecting in general, will never die. People love to collect. Ah, there we go. All right, very, very good. <laughs> We're all done with that. We have a new order. Jorge Trejo, two uh, pokey bra and two old maids. You got it, man. So, Mr. Trejo, what do you pull? Okay, vintage energy, vintage trainer, reverse hollow Zekrom. Ooh. So this is the actual XY era Mega Rayquaza. Nice, dude. It's a nice little pack. It's kind of like you opened up one pack of Roaring Skies and pulled Mega Rayquaza. Dave and Adams EU partnership with PSA. Oh, that's pretty cool. Dave Adams, they're, they're big players. All right. So let's see. Let's jump over here. You're going to be... In this box. Defimbris Gomez. Looking for Mr. Trejo. Need a new bag, he says. Oh, new bag. Also, you need your new, your mates, don't you? Here we go. So let's get you those. Give me a second. Oh, that box is full. Just going to grab a chunk of these. So I'm going to get the next one. And then we'll get you one in the middle. There you go. Very good. Still waiting for John to grade my, grade my wife's cards. John took another day off. So John took today off. Chancy. Poor John. <laughs> it's actually not a bad thing. Uh, if John were to work part-time, that would actually work out very well. Here we go. Ooh. Okay, that's for Jorge Trejo. Welcome to the Tuesday stream. We are still streaming in a quiet voice. I should throw feeling. Still itchy. Still itchy. If I don't talk, it doesn't itch. If I do talk, it does. All right. If I talk in a low voice, it doesn't itch as bad. So that's what we're doing. We're going to say 4.23. That pink had me for a second. I thought I got me. <laughs> ah, darn it. <laughs> Cool. Okay. Let's jump over here to the Zells. Devin Barales. Here's 200 to my slab away. Dang, that's a big payment. Uh, yeah, there haven't been a lot of uh, slab away payments this week. Definitely people are out of money. 
Like, even if nobody wanted to open any cards up, um, normally you'd see a, a number of sideway payments come in. Okay, you got... Whoa, you're almost done with that. That's wild, man. Appreciate it. So, I'm going to add a thing to the menu. Give me a minute. Something real special. Here we go. Sonic the Hedgehog booster box. All right. So last time I checked, these were extremely rare. And I've got a steel box of them. Yeah, you can't even find these for sale anymore. But here's one that sold back in February for 660. So what's interesting is you can't find <coughs> you can't find any more of them for sale. Boy, I got a cough, man. As soon as I start talking. Um, so I can just kind of make up a price. How many are in here? 36, right? Open it's 36. I think it's 36 packs a box, right? Yep, 36 packs. Okay, I've got a price. I'm adding it to the menu now. It's going to be added at the bottom. They're going to be $30 each. Also, when was this printed? Like 1989 or 1990? 1993. All right, cool. So Sonic the Hedgehog is back on the market. I always hated Sonic. What? Behold. There they are. You can buy these from me and ask me to keep them sealed too if you wish. Or you can open them up and we'll take a look at what you pull. It used to be 50 cents. Pretty wild, huh? 50 cents to $30. And that is a pretty remarkable investment. That's times 60, I think. Doubling in price times 60. Well, no. not. It, I don't know if you could say it works that way, but... Yeah, that's pretty good. If I wasn't poor, I'd cut it. So 50 cents, why are you charging 30? I know I'm a big scammer. <laughs> it said 60, it said uh, 50 cents on the box and he's, he's charging 30. <laughs> Nobody back then could have conceived that it would be so valuable today. That's why nobody bothered investing in them. All right. Kind of like crypto, actually. Everyone thought crypto was a joke. Okay, let's see what's next. Jose Mendez. Last payment, you charged me on Zelle, so this is completing my slab away versus charge art. Jose Mendez. Okay, we have another slab away payment. Cool. Jose Mendez. Here it is. You have a Charizard from November. I'm going to go grab it. I'm going to go grab it. Wow. 
great card. Wow. Okay, we're going to remove that. And uh, give me a moment. I'm going to take another cough. There we go. All right. So we have taken care of that. Let's clean up. My emails were fast. We get all of these bad emails. Stamps.com. Rockstar Games. Why am I getting a Rockstar Games ad? Oops. What the F? I'm not trying to write an email. The F? Why do you think I'm trying to do that? Walmart delivery. I got some delivery today, guys. I spent like $200 on groceries today. Damn, groceries are expensive. Once Meeker Bunko for Victor Neves. Okay, Smeeker. Mm -hmm. To Disney Weiss. You got it. Got anything else I can slab away? Absolutely, I do. I got a ton of cards. I have some, one of the biggest collection of expensive Pokemon cards, so I've always got something. We can go through it in a minute here. Okay. You got the two chipmunks. Mistress, the line big. Uh, the opposite of that. It's actually real short. Here we go. It's a Tuesday stream. For those of you who didn't know this, Tuesday is one of the slowest days of the entire week. So... Tuesday is a great day to jump in if you don't want, like, a long line, because you probably won't find one on Tuesday. Sometimes you get a long line on Tuesday, but actually it's pretty rare. Maybe some kind of new product launches, something like that happens. Yep. All right. Ass is expensive. I've waited two minutes. WSP, I'm back. I'm Dale. He, Chris. What? <laughs> Did John get any sobs done today? Uh, John took another personal day. I'm I'm fine with him doing that. By the way, yeah, John took a John took a personal day today. I'm sure he'll be back in tomorrow. Holland Electrode. Pokemon Breeders Nurturing. We should uh, host a meetup soon, don't you think? I was thinking of hosting a meetup just to have something to do. Here's Haunter. Hey, here's a nice one. Pop 22 PSA 8 Merlin Sticker Charizard. If you're looking for a slab away card, that one's not bad. He will always be rare. This Charizard will. I guarantee it. There are not a lot of Merlin 2 boxes. You can never find them for sale. And he does not pull very often out of that box at all. So he's a very unique, very rare Charizard. Uh, here's a very cool card. Uh, you would invest in this one because this card rarely grades 10. It's the Rainbow uh, Hollow from Team Rocket. Very prestigious, well-known set. Mine has a perfect swirl right in the middle. And uh, yeah, it just grades 10 so rarely. It's kind of like the Dark Magneton in the way that it grades uh, 9 most of the time. His Venusaur. He was asking me about some cards worth putting into Slab Away. Anything from this time period, 2005-ish, these are all real low pop because they didn't print very much of it. For whatever reason, Pokemon was not doing so well back then. So the demand must have been pretty low, and they felt it and decided not to, to, to print very much. I need more Versus. Hmm... I don't think I have any more verses. I think at the time I was selling them all. Here's a uh, Raikou. He's pretty cool. You could try to cross grade him into a 10 at PSA. So that might be an interest of yours. Beedrill. This Aerodactyl is pretty cool. How to get different poker slabs up there. Some poker slabs clearly sell faster than others. 
versus pack break. You know, I could probably be down for that. I don't know if I recommend it though. Those versus packs are like, is they're like a, uh, unbelievably expensive crowbat, whereas the actual versus slabs are not. Vivid Voltage Lugia. Got lots of nice slabs, almost too many of them. Maybe I need to make like a video slabs I have for sale. I'm at a point where I'm very slab saturated because I've successfully graded a lot of cards. And then we just had that PSA return from like two years ago. Turned out I had like 50 cards in there. So I just got tons of slabs right now. I am slab dense. Plus, anytime I want to sell something, I can actually just go to my own collection and pick something out of it and offer it for sale. I'm always shopping for a good deal. Look at this Dark Alexam. So I'm always acquiring new inventory of rare and interesting stuff. And then I offer that for Slab Away, usually like a year later. And by then, it's moved up in price. Isn't that funny? By then, it's more expensive. He is slab -turated. That's a funny expression. There we go. The Merlin Zara, it catches my eye. It, it catches mine too. If you didn't know this, Don, I have two of them. I kept one for myself and I'm making the other one for sale. But I could honestly keep them both. So if you look up the population on this card, it's extremely low. There's a PSA 10, pop one, and that's it. And, uh, yep, he pu pulls out of the Merlin 2 series, and you can never find that, that box for sale online. Just not for sale. All right. Give me a number. Give me a heads or tails. Guess who's back again? Kingston's back to cause trouble. I'm about to get pissed. <laughs> Heads. Oh, sorry, Marshall. All right. You got got. Oh, I'm loving this music. What is this music? Ancestry. That's the name of this song. I like the uh, like the term. Ancestry. Okay, so we're out of Zell order. So let's head back over to the Pay House. What do we got in the Pay House? We have a mic side. Hundred dollar for my subway. Mic side. You got it. Mic side. You got tears, 170, like Misty's tears? <laughs> Jorge Trejo, bulk grade the Ray Ray. Oh yeah, perfect, okay. Perfect. Wish I had $1,200 burning a hole in my pocket. Go, Ray Ray. There's a customer that wants to sob away the Charmeleon. Uh, the Topps Charmeleon, right? Uh, that's being sent off to cross grade. I bought 50 Merlin sticker S2 packs for a dollar piece and pulled two hollow arts. Nice, man. For a dollar piece. Where do you find a deal like that? <laughs> I'd pay a lot of money to acquire those uh, Series 2 boxes. I'm feeling a pain in my throat. Huh. I wonder if I have bad vocal cords from screaming too much. This is a bull grade. No legendary collection Charmeleon. Uh, I do actually have one of those. Let's see, where, where did I place him? I placed him somewhere. That's the thing, I placed him somewhere. I don't know where he went. I placed him somewhere because I said I'd sell him later, but I don't know where. I acquired one of those from a guy who canceled a slab away, and I'm not sure where it is. Here's Roger Gray. He wants one of the new Sonic packs. Right, so we open up a box of Sonics for fun. And I just want to make sure that the menu stays fun and interesting. Here we are. Mr. Roger Gray, let's see what you got. That's right, I remember these. These don't open very well. go that says flick it there you go that was i was helping my wife flick it earlier there you go. K 
Kingston Ball doesn't know what that means. Ooh. Will you sell Pokey Cow to Poise? <laughs> yeah. Mister, will you sell me Pokemon coats? Look at that, man. That is a great looking card. Very gradable, in my opinion. Mr. Reed. What did I need to read? Of course I do, mister. I watch blank. Oh, my God, dude. This kid, man. <laughs> Just right out with it. <laughs> That's the things you would never have said in the 90s. Nobody talked like that in the 90s. Now it's just, you just come right out with it. Sure I do. I know exactly what that is. You're flicking the bean in the pornos. Duh. There we go. We're not going to show you our titties. Bitch, I don't want to see your titties. You guys have to scissor. <laughs> Roger Gray. Okay, Roger Gray. Lots of gradable cards out of that Sonic pack. Here we go. All right. I was pretty young when I got exposed to pornography. And uh, uh, I've had a very normal and happy sex life. <coughs> it didn't mess anything up for me. Jennifer Yap says, one sealed, one opened. Sonics, you got it. Okay, Jennifer. Mister, he wanted the pack art. Well, it's not possible to save the pack art. When you open it, it gets destroyed. So this pack art is made out of a very bad plastic. So when you when you go to open it, it always tears in a really bad way. It, it's I, I've known this because I've opened like three or four boxes of this now. The, the art always tears it's it's very poor here we are the way corn is now it'll explode your mind <laughs> okay so jennifer look at what jennifer yap is doing she's keeping one sealed that's the way to enjoy the pack art right there then you got the real deal it's only 30 bucks now you know and it's a it's vintage product one day it could be 100 bucks you never know there we go. All right. Miss Jennifer. Buddies. Hey, bud. Hey, dude. Way cool. There's men having the sex with their vehicles. Way cool. I really like this one. Don't you guys like this one? Because it's the original video game artwork. So cool. Sonic sneakers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright. Okay, so these are the game cards where it shows him actually running through the levels. I don't like these as much because I don't think... The level image is authentic, but these guys are like painted in. I like these over here the most. Then there's men having sex with each other. Yeah. Heard about that. I have heard about that. Mm. There we go. These are very gradable vintage cards. I really like this song. Devin Baralis, one Star Wars Chrome. Here we are. Star Wars Chrome, guys. Some really great pulls in here. Do you collect anything besides Pokemon? Just mainly just Pokemon. Pokemon's got something special to it. Gotta catch them all, right? Here we go. Can I send you my personal cards and you will grade them? Yep, that's what I do. You can mail in your cards and I'll grade them. 
You have to pay to do that, though, okay? So it costs money. It's not free. Okay. Here we are. You sound so different tonight. Tonight, we're doing kind of a whisper ASMR stream. We've been doing that for the last three nights. So it's kind of a hushed sound. Kylo Ren. Everyone's welcome. Bud Light drinkers are welcome with open wheels. We are. Open diglets. Okay, Demi Baralas. Very nice. He says, why? Uh, to help my voice. To help my voice. I'm having an issue where I cough a lot. And I think I've linked it to my vocal cords. I've been having a bad cough that lasted a long time. And I, I believe it's because I don't take any breaks from streaming. So this is my break from streaming is to just talk softly. Also because I want to fall in love with you. So I'm, I'm whispering in your ear going, hey, baby. <laughs> Here's Toxtricity. Here's the Water Flowers. Ooh. Okay. And Raikou. Okay. And Ditto. Here's Michael Kislaskow. Let's keep those slab away payments going. Thank you, Michael. That's a big one, man. So this is going to go down to 500. Thank you very much. If everyone paid their slab away off tonight, I'd be rich. There's like a million slabs in slab away right now. <laughs> How much does it cost to grade five cards? Well, it would cost about 40 bucks to grade five cards. All right, let's see. <laughs> Alan Guo, one box of Crystal Revenge. I'm too deep in to pull out now. <laughs> okay, give me a second. So I was going through my inventory. I have at least a whole nother case of these. This is my, yeah, that's right. This is my corn voice. Kingston says, oh, damn, that is a great deal. Yeah, grading with me is not very expensive. That's true for all you guys, too. If you pull a nice card, I'll grade it for eight bucks. So you should consider doing some grading. It's it's cheap, it's fun, and uh, it keeps John employed. So if you like Mr. John, he joined last year, and he gets a nice paying job. He earns... Uh, the uh, he's earning $21 an hour to work with Pokemon cards. And as part of the deal, he also gets really cheap rent. So that's the deal. And so I need lots of grades to keep Mr. John full-time employed and busy. Here we are. There we go. Very nice. What do you grade with PSA and Beckett? Well, a lot, actually, because I'm not allowed to... Uh, if I were to take my own card, my ungraded card, grade it myself, and then sell it, I don't think people would like that. They would get very mad at me, probably. They'd be like, that's unethical, because there's a conflict of interest. The whole idea of grading is that it's third-party grading, meaning someone else other than you graded it. So I have to send my cards off to PSA, even though I'd love to do my own brand, I'd love to have all my cards graded with my own brand and sell my own brand. I'm, I'm just not allowed to do that. So that's illegal for me. So I don't do it. I let a third party grade my cards, uh, but I can grade your cards. We are. All right, let's go through these. When can I move in, Mr. I mow grass? <laughs> well, you know, if I could buy another cheap, small home, I wouldn't mind hiring somebody to... Um, I wouldn't mind hiring somebody to take over, like, selling bulk cards, essentially. 
We get a lot of bolt cards, and I don't really sell them or do anything smart with them. And I think that if I had someone who could take a job uh, doing that, uh, but, but see, they'd have to make it profitable to the point where they justify their own pay. So that's the tricky part, and I don't know how that looks. I don't know how that works out. Does John get good benefits? It's not really any benefits. I'm just a small business, so I'm not like buying John's insurance or 401k or anything like that. But for the kind of work it is, I'm paying. Uh, I think the Walmart out here was hiring for like 12.50 an hour. So that Walmart, if he were to get a job there, that'd be 12.50, and he's doing instead 21 dollars an hour and works in a much better environment, in my opinion. Plus, I again, he gets a nice deal on rent. I charge him uh, $900 a month on rent, and I pay all the utilities too. Now, I looked up the value of the, uh, I looked up how much I'm supposed to be charging. It's probably supposed to be around $1,400 what I'm supposed to be charging. It's a two-bedroom, it's a two-bathroom, three-bedroom home is what it is. And so I'm supposed to be charging about $1,400 for that. And uh, obviously, I'm not supposed to be paying the utilities in a normal, uh, normal renter situation. But so we do that, and John's been a pretty good employee so far, um, though he's pretty goofy sometimes. <laughs> Here we are. Here's Fusion Destiny. Damn, Walmart out here pays $17 an hour. Well, this is Missouri. Missouri's a cheaper place to live. Minimum wage in Texas is $7.25. Put this over here. Is he W-2'd? Well, I asked my accountant what would be best for him, and the accountant told me it would be better if he counted as a uh, as a contract worker. She told me it's better for him, too, to be a contract worker. So she said, have him be a contract worker. I said, okay. I don't, honestly, I don't know if John even does taxes. I don't know how he does it. I assume he does. But he's almost like – he's not paid under the table or anything. He pays on PayPal, so he's not paid in cash. I think if he uh, submitted his paperwork to the government, government wouldn't charge him very much taxes at all. And uh, the government would probably actually, um, yeah, I don't know. Government would probably give him an option for cheap, um, like uh, Obamacare or whatever, right? The, the cheap in, uh, government provider insurance. There we go. How much is it to grade? $8 to grade a card with me. If, you, if you've never graded a card with me, you should give it a try. Just for fun. Mister, I have two questions. Let's hear them. Doo -doo -doo. My family pays $1,200 a month in rent for five-bedroom, three-bath house, but that was before the whole housing market inflation. My landlord is real cool. I like to hear that. Yeah, that's nice, man. Well, and, you know, renting is different in every place because some places, uh, the houses are real valuable. So the rent is real high. Out here in Lake of the Ozarks, there's a severe housing shortage because everyone's moving in. Okay, so that's for Alan Guo. Mr. Allen, I did not see a Starlight Rare. Darn. <laughs> We should be paying like fifteen hundred a month or more. So, Alan, where am I going to find your bag? Oh, here you are. How long does it take for you to grade and get the cards back? It can take about a month. Yeah. When I grade with you, do the cards come back in a PSA slab or what? Well, they come back in my own personal slab. Let me show you. All right. So it would look kind of like this. Oops. Come on now. There we go. You can pay for the grading to be much faster too. So if you pay, um, I believe it's $13 a card. 
your car to be graded in just about one day. That's real fast. Nothing like what you would do if you had PSA or even CGC. Because if you graded with them, uh, if you if you paid for express grading with PSA or CGC, first of all, you paid a lot more money than $13 per card. But second of all, first you have to mail it to them, then it has to arrive, then they have to open up your box. So it takes a long time with them. My my express grading, if you if you open a card here on the Kingston, you know how you have this card right here? So Kingston, if you paid $13 for me to express grade this, this card would be given a grade, a number grade tonight. And then John would probably grade it up the next day. That's how fast the express grading is. So it is very fast. Did you check out those slabs last night? Ah, I totally forgot. I was getting yelled at by, um, there was a guy yelling at me because he was mad about uh, how long a PSA return took, Mr. Brian Timbers. He was mad because he told he's telling me he came into the stream and asked me where his PSA return was. And he he's telling me I looked him up and told him it's in the next return. But then he noticed he wasn't in the next return. And then I went and I looked him up last night. And I'm like, your card's been back the whole time. It's been back since October of last year. So he got real mad at me because he's claiming that I looked his card up for him and told him it was in the next submission. That's totally not true. If I had actually looked his card up, I would have seen it came back in October. Likely what actually happened, he probably said, where's my card? And I probably said, oh, look, you submitted a card with me a long time ago. And then I probably said something like, well, you know, we're getting another submission back and it'll be the last submission. So he probably conflated that with, there is a new submission coming in, mine must be in it. But he, all he had to do was go look himself up. All he, it's Control F in the PSA Returns channel. Control F, Brian Timber, he's right there. So his his slab's been here since October, and he just didn't know it. And uh, so he got real, real pissed off at me last night. He was like, I'm pissed. And I was like, this is why I don't do middleman grading, because I'm not going to look up every person's, you know, all your information's public in the Returns channel. So all you got to do is look up your own slab, just search your own name. And he's mad because I'm not doing it for him. And I was like, this is an awful feeling. It felt absolutely terrible. So that viewer had an awful attitude. Yeah, he was saying that I was a scammer. And I was like, <laughs> I hate it how people just go straight to that word scammer. I don't feel like looking up my own card. You told me, he thinks I told him it's in the next submission. Obviously, I did not actually say that. Because again, if I had actually looked his card up, I would have seen it was back in October. So I probably just told him, you know, we got one more coming in. It's the last one. He Again, he probably conflated that with yours is therefore in that one. And and all he had to do is look himself up in the returns channel. He just didn't want to. And this is the problem you run into it. You get a lot of abuse from people who are impatient. And they go, where's my card? Where's my card? Where's my card? Well, look, PSA is the one taking two years to grade it. That's nothing to do with me. That's PSA, dude. So PSA takes a long time, and I'm the one who gets crucified for it. All right, Jonathan says, finish off my slab away. You got it. And he says, whatever's left, fifth voltage. All right, let's see. Jonathan Morris. That is the next order. Clear Charizard 10. So Jonathan Morris, it says here you have $250 remaining. So you will actually have 150 remaining after that payment. He says, finish off my slab away, I think. <laughs> so you're right here. Jonathan Morris, clear charge R10, 375 down to 150. So that's what's left. Mr. is the best, screw off. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. White people cook with their pets on the counter. <laughs> that is very gross. I actually agree that's very gross. I hear Blackstar wants to slab away that Charmeleon slab. It makes this Weedle move. Where, where is that Charmeleon slab? I don't know where it went. I think I placed it somewhere. Is it down here? Is it over here? I do not know where it went. It's over here somewhere though. Boy, I have plenty of poker slabs. It, it makes you feel wealthy to have those poker slabs because you feel like, oh, here it is. You feel like you've got something you can you can sell, you know? I think I might list a couple on eBay. I have so many. Just give me a price. Well, we're going to look them up.
Legendary Collection Charmeleon. Okay, so we want the cheapest version of it. Because that's what you'll be wanting. You'll want the cheapest version. It looks like the cheapest one is $247 plus $30, $30 shipping from the UK. So that comes out to $277. Any cosmic packs? Uh, yeah, actually, I do have some cosmic packs, believe it or not. The last box of cosmic didn't finish selling, if I recall. And I think enough time has passed that I can make them for sale now. Um, but where would I have placed that, huh? If I had a box of unsold... Oh, it's right here, in fact. Ow. <laughs> Eric Needham says, white people. Oh, that's an Ancient Origins pack. Oh, amazing. Okay, hold on. What the hell? All right, here we are. Cosmic. All right, Cosmic. Um, I don't remember what we were selling Cosmic for. Man, listen to that music. I love it. Uh-huh. So, white people are white. Now, that is a very fair observation. Do you know if the cards that I will send in to be graded for my personal collection? Uh, let's hear them. White people think wine is seasoning. Here we are. Well, that's not just a white people thing. The Asians do that too, right? Asian season... Actually, I think most cultures will often use some form of alcohol as a seasoning. Here we are. Here we are. There we go. What are your thoughts on Pixar versus Disney? Would you recommend collecting? The uh, Weiss Disney packs sell very well. I've seen the artworks in them. I consider them to be very good. I expect those to be valuable over time. Italians use wine a bunch. Yeah, a lot of, um, a lot of websites that survey the best food in the world, uh, Italy ranks really high on the list. Usually, Italy takes the first spot. I didn't see any list where Italy wasn't first. Here's Yellen to Jampins. Two Alteria break spots. Okay, Yellen to Jampins. I got something to put on the table here. At 200 viewers, we'll open up this Dragon's Exalted. Here we are. So, Yellen, two, three. Yellen to Jampins. There we go. Onde esta el perico? Wow, I speak Spanglish now. One poker card. Okay, let's try this poker card. I just grabbed the next one for you. Clefable, that's so cute. One of the Weiss Disney packs. Okay, one of the Weiss Disney. Here we are. I gotta learn Spanish so I can get me one of those spicy mamacitas. There we go. Yolan to Jampins. Mr. Yolan. Palmstream's putting me to sleep. I'm pissed. rock -a -bye. I will send a Gyarados VMAX rainbow. What? You're crazy. You're out of control, man. Nectaria Combos. Could I have a spot in the Altaria? Wow, Nectaria. I feel like I haven't seen you in a while. There we go. 
Straight white males are hated in California. California love. All right, heads or tails? What's the cue like tonight? Pretty short. Fails, white males. Oh, A. Perez says heads. Oh, you're right, Mr. A. Perez. Mr. A. Perez. All right, you know what that means, guys. There it is, Ice Q. We get a giveaway going. Refresh this. To give this card away, I need a, a keyword for the card. Come up with a keyword for me. Man, that was a cool song, man. That was called Rube Doe. This one's called So Below. Calvin Fellman says he'll take a spot in the break, too. Thank you, Calvin. Yeah, I really like this music. Now, we have a uh, large break for this Lugia card. The odds are 1 in 20, and it's $15 a spot. Okay. Christine Andrews says, Mr., I need to express the Star Wars sketch. Okay, Christine. Christine, you know, I feel like John's going to have trouble with that card because I don't even know where that came from. telling John that I don't know where the card came from. Oh, this needs the express on it. Here we go. If I send five cards to grade and spend 13 on faster shipping, how much would that cost? So it's $13 per card for the express grade. Did you see how Christine just got express grading? The express grading occurs in one day, and so it'd be 13 per card, so that's 50 plus 15. It'd be $65. Okay, Nath Rayner says one tops movie. Okay, you got it, man. Tonight, we added something cool to the menu. You might not have seen it. Here we are. We cracked open a fresh box of Sonic the Hedgehog. This extremely rare set just cannot be found. It is so hard to find this set anymore. And right now, it is priced at $35 a pack. Each card in this pack is probably gradable. There you go. Three, Disney. One, two, three. What do we got? Ooh. Oh, Steamboat Mickey. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Peter Pan. 
Hey, this isn't the right Peter Pan. The correct Peter Pan is an Indian boy. Is Mewtwo still the strongest Pokemon? The strongest Pokemon is... Pikachu. Everyone knows this. There you go. Nath Rainer. Uh, Disney's developing a new uh, Peter Pan live-action movie, and the choice of cast for the boy is an Indian boy. But Peter Pan is not Indian. He's a white guy. He's a he's a British kid. Oh, my is itchy. Okay, there we go. I thought Peter Pan was black. Mr. Nath. You're going to be over here. Tinkerbell's now black. Oh, right. I forgot about that. Tinkerbell's black and Peter Pan is an Indian. Uh, by the way, I don't dislike black people. I don't dislike Indian people. It's just that, you know, it's like if we took a story about an Indian kid and swapped it with white people, which actually I thought people were complaining about that. There was a term for it. It was called whitewashing. So is it okay one way and not the other way? Like, does it upset us or doesn't it? It is Nath Rainer. All right. As long as it's okay both ways, I honestly don't care. That's the truth. If it's okay both ways, I don't care. But I heard about whitewashing for years. There was so much... Ooh, look at that, guys. Look at this. Oh, my God. So beautiful. Ooh. Do you ship to Idaho? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I don't ship to Idaho. That's the one place I don't ship. Okay, what do we got? There we go. Funko says, I'd buy Disney, but I don't, but I want to keep the bulk. Sorry to hear that. Here we are. This is a no bulk channel. Here's Pikachu. If the packs were over $30, we probably would let you keep the bulk. But they are a cheaply printed new modern set. So we're just going to remove them for now. You could make maybe like a big order and, and order a round of shipping at the same time. So if you did that, we would include the shipping that way. All right. Beautiful, man. Thoughts on Disney Lorcana? Yeah, Disney Lorcana is going to come out real soon. And then you're going to have Weiss Disney and Disney Lorcana at the same time. So there's going to be a lot of Disney. Lorcana incoming. You are definitely going to have Lorcana. Oh, what, what are we going to put here, guys? <laughs> Cody Rogers. Whoa, he's got a big order. 275. Okay, so Cody Rogers wants a time extension. Hold on, Cody. Let's do that. Okay, and then you want to apply 275 to it. That brings it down to 600. There you go. Eight packs of Ghosts of the Past. Okay, you got it. the Chinese Disney card set. No, I'm going to stay away from that for now. Mm 
Sounds like Asian music in the background. This music was made by a guy in Sweden. C418 is Swedish. There we go. You comment as soon as I upload a pic. <laughs> All right. I still haven't heard any good keywords for this ice cube. What do you guys think should be for the ice cube? We need a keyword. I have a bag. I messaged you on Discord about my old bag that you could not find. Oh, Cody Rogers old bag. Very interesting. Sanic the Hedgehog. Was a bit loud, huh? All right, here we go. The claw. The claw will decide who will go and who will stay. <laughs> Did I miss the 200 viewer pack? Not yet. We're at 150 viewers. Cold. Cold. <laughs> Ran needs a hug and ponies. Okay, that's cold. All right. <laughs> Cody Rogers, no luck in there. There we go. So you said you messaged me on Discord. Is your name? Well, I do not see it. I see Gento Penguin. Is it under message request? Crooked, concrete, a suki, wallow. So I don't see the message. You can try to bump the message right now. Okay, let's go find Cody Rogers' current bag, though. Oh, man, I rubbed my eye and that's super itchy. I'm getting pissed. You can't ship to the land of potatoes. <laughs> You're a potato. Has the bloke from last night shown up yet? The one arguing with Tammy. Yeah, he uh, he he talked a whole bunch of shit to me in a, on Discord because he was mad that his card took so long from PSA. And I'm like, it's not my fault. That's PSA's fault. Some unusual packs we have for sale. You might be interested in these. Tyler Hardwood Floors would help your room, mister. Hardwood Floors sounds nice. <laughs> Free white Tinkerbell. Poor Tinkerbell. Kevin O'Neill says one diamond pearl spot. That's right. Did you guys know? Did you guys know we have this right here? Here we are. So in the news today, I heard that Walmart shutting down in Chicago. Four locations. And uh, this comes on the same news not too long ago that Walmart was shutting down in other parts of Illinois. And Walmart was also shutting down in Portland, Oregon. I'm seeing a pattern here. I'm seeing a pattern. The places that are at highest risk of a new riot looting situation. You always talk about that. Uh, 
no, I don't always talk about that, but it is a it it just that news just came out about five hours ago, so it is in the news. Um, we talk about whatever's in the news essentially. That's that's a big uh, it's a big sign that the retail stores were in fact impacted by the looting and the rioting, and they don't want to be. Is Idaho in the United States? As far as I'm concerned, it's not. Here's Jeff Leon, Two Paramount War. Two Paramount War English. Here we are. Mr. is yelling again. It was Oregon last time. USPS pay drop. I am Cody Rogers. I just sent the same message to you again on Discord. Okay. Ah, here it is. Ash Stretchum. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> His Discord name is Ash Stretchum. Uh, the only card I remember was Etch Star Wars with old Obi-Wan and a Japanese gym challenge, Hollow Blaine Arcanine. Oh, yes. Okay, so then I need to I need to recover those things for you. Let me save this. All right. I, you know, if you mentioned it, I can see you, you uh, posted that on 4-5. You know, it's crazy. It wasn't even my in my mailbox, which means that you probably got shoved down by other people trying to talk to me. So anytime someone talks to me, their message gets bumped to the top, right? So I, you just get bumped down if you don't continuously push it. One Disney. We still stretch them all. I want to look something really interesting up for you guys. How much inventory does the average Walmart carry? Look at this. The average inventory for Walmart was 3.8 million. 3.8 million dollars a product was likely stolen last time there were riots. Last time there's riots and looting, places like Target and Walmart, each store lost millions of dollars. And so why is Walmart moving out of those locations? Not only are they not profitable because there's too much theft in general, but probably they're calculating the odds of, okay, another George Floyd event occurs. Is that going to happen again? You bet your ass it's going to happen again. And so the next time that eluding occurs, those are the places they don't want to be. They don't want to be in Chicago because they're expecting the looting to be very bad. That's what's going on. It's as simple as that. And... I talk about how if you want to run a strong economy, the number one thing that investors need is safety. That's the number one thing because they need to know that their investment isn't going to be stolen. So we talk about that a lot. You're right. I took I took uh, two economic courses in school. I was originally in school for finance. I swapped to computer science. And so I took two, uh, well, technically it was three. I took macro and micro, and then I took uh, basically social economics. So it was a total of three classes. But I also took accounting and I took um, introduction to finance. So I took all those classes and one of my professors was really good. He is a really, really old guy. And he said when he was a young eco uh, economics guy, he uh, part of his job would be to go to countries, really small countries, and teach them how to develop their economy. And he said the issue for most of those small countries is that there wasn't enough security for any kind of economic development. And he said, so you have to basically have a police force that ensures no corruption and lots of safety. Otherwise, investors don't want to touch you. This is precisely what's just happened. Walmart's an investor in your community. They'll open up a big business, provide a lot of stable jobs, provide cheap goods. And when Walmart pulls out like that, that is a horrible sign for your community. It means that you are not you are not a place where a business wants to operate at all because of the level of crime. Jeff Leon, none of that is surprising to you guys. Uh, and when you hear it in your ears, you're like, of course, of course that's how it works. You know, it's... Nobody really needs to be told that that's how it works. I'm going for business administration in school. Very cool. Kingston, send your cards to me. I'll get them to Mister. Don't listen to him. I hate when Walmart pulls out. Damn it, Walmart! Here we are. You know, I used to. In the '90s, everyone hated Walmart, but as time went by, Walmart did get competitors like Amazon. Now, um, 
I mean, one of the reasons we moved to this new house was literally so we could be close to a Walmart. Walmart just has everything. It's, a, it's almost like a mall. Walmart has replaced the mall. So we love living next to a Walmart because it's got all the food. Actually, it's got some extravagant food. It's got all the clothing. It's got all the toys. It's got all the whatever, automotive, hardware. So we love going to Walmart. And so does America because Walmart's extremely profitable and they're all over the place. So when a Walmart shuts down in your neighborhood, your neighborhood just took a nosedive in value, in my opinion. Because if I'm willing to relocate just to be closer to a Walmart, who else will relocate to get to a Walmart? You know what I mean? So and here are my thoughts. So you have your you have your um your struggling ghetto-ish neighborhood and it's got a Walmart. Great. The Walmart leaves. You know what leaves with the Walmart? All those jobs, all that structure, any investment that the Walmart was making. The Walmart doesn't just hire people, but the Walmart needs people to pave the roads and run maintenance on it. It offers manager positions. It, it's, there's a store manager. So it adds so much to a local economy to have a Walmart. It really doesn't live close to a Walmart so you can feel like you're in an actual town. They're leaving too. So all the guys like me who are going... <laughs> I don't want to have to go shopping at the gas station for food. They're leaving too. They're going to go. They're going to move out of your community and toward the closest Walmart. They're going to say, this area sucks. It's full of crime. Walmart left because there's so much crime. This Walmart over here has less crime and the houses are nicer and I can actually go shopping again. And so all the people with money who have the ability to move, they're going to sell their homes, get out of that place, and they're going to move to a nicer place with the Walmart. <clears throat> excuse me. So with the Walmart leaves people who have the money to leave. And so that area is going to nosedive. That's how it works. Uh, and what's, here's the frustrating part. How many people would just blame it on racism? How many people would just blame it on, oh, you don't put enough money in our system? No, the real problem began when people chose to steal. That is where it started. When people chose to riot and loot and steal, that is where it all started. And you can choose not to do those things. All right, Eric Lovato, one Disney pack. You got it, Eric. Let's see. I live in the inner city of LA, tons of crime. We have two to three Walmarts and just LA high rise. Do you think there are over or under 15,000 Moonbrions printed? <laughs> I don't know the exact number. I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Okay, this is for Eric, Mr. Eric. Here we go. Inner City Life Trife. Lost way over. What sucks is the mom and pop shops will get looted more now that Walmart left. Yes, well, you know, the, it's one thing's clear. They're not going to reduce crime, and that's why Walmart left. And a lot of people are going to leave too. So those areas have been destroyed by those policies, and I would argue that they're liberal pro policies. There we go. So you get a lot of conservative versus liberal ideas, and what you want to see are the results of those ideas, and here we have the results of those ideas. That area is going to be called a food desert on Vice TV. They're going to do a report on the food deserts, you're going to be told to feel very guilty. Oh, white flight or some stupid thing like that. So you're going to be told to be feel very guilty over it. It's the crime. And not just the lack of stopping the crime, but the people who are choosing to commit it. Even if you're poor, you have to choose not to steal. It's the right thing to do. And you shouldn't have to be told that either. You should know it. Irvin Arroyo paying my slab. Mr. Irvin. Choosing not to steal when you're poor is exactly an example of what makes a society a great society. You know, if you're rich and you choose not to poor, that's not a surprise because it's easy to do that. But when you are poor and you still choose not to steal, you've done something really special. So, next up, we have Mr. Irvin Arroyo. I'm removing the $25 from you, slab away. There you go. You have 207 remaining. Because the real struggle is when you're poor and you're tempted to steal. And if you can choose not to, you've done a real special thing. And when a lot of people choose not to steal, even when they're poor, you have what's going to be a great society.
Mauricio Murillo says, Pokemon English Scarlet Violet, 10 packs. You got it, man. Dump my verses and regular haulers. How much, how to, and how much to ship? What's up, Mauricio? Mauricio, he says, it's been a while. So Mauricio, to ship, um, is $9 to ship. That's how it works. And you don't have to ship right away. You can ship, you can ship when you want. Just don't leave your bag over here for a straight year without adding anything to it. If you leave your bag over here for a straight year, we consider that a, a bag that you wanted to donate <laughs> after the year is up. What's in Idaho? What if you're poor and can't eat but steal food? I, I think that most people understand food, but that's not what's really being stolen, is it? There's been, <laughs> there's been an enormous number of videos on the internet of what's really being stolen. Here we are. Ta-da! So in America, what's really being stolen are goods that can be sold, and it's being stolen by organized criminal gangs. So it's organized crime, getting into Walmart, stealing huge amounts of inventory, and then leaving to sell it on eBay or some shit like that. And it's looting as well. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. I've done retail for ten years. People steal the stupidest stuff for no reason. <laughs> Yeah, I worked in retail for a while. I actually worked for Walmart. Uh, I worked for Sam's Club. <coughs> Sam's Club is Walmart. They're the same company. And uh, so I worked for Sam's Club for about a half year before I got hired on to Coca-Cola. But before then, I worked for Target for, I think, about three full years. And I worked at Sears for about a half year as well. So I worked retail. And um, I wouldn't want to live in a place where the retail company has to put everything behind bars, where the retail company has to lock everything up in glass cages. It's such a depressing feeling, and it's like a reminder that you live in the shitty part of town. The shitty pot town. Remember that? Shitty pot town from South Park. Welcome to shitty pot town. Welcome home. No shipping to Idaho. If you watch the same guy on the way out, there's always catching people not paying. Yes. Here you go, Mauricio. Choosing not to steal. It's not about money. It's not about enriching yourself. It's about doing the right thing. That's what it's about. And people don't care about that anymore. They do not care. They really just care about the reward of stealing. But the problem is... I would not want to live with you if that's your mentality. I don't want you as my neighbor. I don't want you in my country. So if your mentality is, I should just steal what I can steal, you are a terrible person. You are, you are a type of criminal that makes a society terrible to live in. And so usually a society has a mix of those people. You have a mix of people who do the right thing and a mix of people who do the wrong thing. When society has too many bad people choosing to do the wrong thing, it's no longer a good place to live. That's when you pack your bags and you leave. And that's how the whole world works. Yesterday, we're, remember these two islands? Island 1, Island 2, Island 3. So this one's just defined as poor. This one's just defined as rich. How did that occur? How did this island get poor and this island get rich? Well, the difference was the choices of the people living on the islands. And one of the ways that one of the islands becomes the poor island is everyone on the poor island left it. All the, all the people who had money, they abandoned it. They said, wow, there's just too much crime here. I'm out of here, dude. I'm out of here. And now you are one of those poor islands. So American cities actually used to be pretty nice to live in way in the past when they were actually built. So they, they were built a long time ago and they were nice places to live. And then everyone fled the cities and this issue continues to occur and it always will until crime reduces to a signif significant lower, uh, a significantly lower number. But, you know, uh, there's exceptions to that. Uh, for example, St. Louis is one of the highest crime places. It still has a decent amount of the uh, Missouri population living there, but they live in like enclaves. So they live in perfect little neighborhoods that are all heavily gated. You guys might have something like that in California, actually. So in California, if I had to guess, because there's a lot of people in California, you guys probably have areas that are real locked up tight. Probably got security gates. 
probably hard to reach. You have to drive to it. And, and it's just outside of the a city where all the crime is occurring. So that's what happened. But people used to live in the city like they do in Europe. They used to live in the city and you would climb out of your, your city apartment and just walk to wherever it is you're walking to, you know. Uh, and they used to do that in New York, right? Here we are. But so what's sad is American cities, you would want them to move toward being a place to live like that. You would want American cities to move toward being like Tokyo, essentially. And instead, they're moving in that opposite direction. They're becoming more violent. They're becoming riskier to stay there. They're becoming uh, more, more theft. You hear about, remember that one lady in New York? It was an Asian lady and a homeless man. She was a, I remember she was a nice Asian lady who works at the homeless shelter and she was stalked by a man who pushed her in front of a train and she died that way. She, she got hit by a train because she got pushed into it and it was all over the news because it was su such a horrible crime. Why would anyone want, she, ob so obviously if she had not lived there, she would be alive today and people weigh that heavily in their mind. They're like, wow, so there is a risk with living in this area that that could be me. And the more it happens, the more people see it on the media. The more people say, all right, I don't want any more risk. I'm tired with the risk. I'm getting out of here. No more risk for me. And uh, so there's that constant uh, tug of war on how much how much risk people want to take because they know that the crime's going to be higher within the U.S. city than outside. I got a bag. says so tough for no reason. Oh, Mauricio, you're saying you have a bag. Okay. Is that Mauricio? Mr. He has a bag. So you say it's been a while. Hopefully not a full year, right? Let's take a quick look. Hey, Mr. Which Sword and Shield set do you think will have reprints? Oh, God, I'm getting a security question from PayPal. Hold on. Oh, I hate these security questions, man. All right. Let's hit verify. Oh my God, I hate these security questions. Why do they even do this to me, man? <laughs> I'm pissed. Okay, there we go. Let me in. Mauricio, are we preaching the purge now? Hmm, lol, oh boy. I didn't say anything about the purge. But you know what does happen is people leave. And then the area that's been left becomes that island full of poor people. Oh, okay, so you ordered last in October. You definitely have a bag. Mauricio, that's not that long ago, Mauricio. Believe it or not. So let's start looking for you. You're going to be somewhere over here. <laughs> My favorite part is when Mr. complains of the security questions. Well, they ask like 12 of them, dude. They just keep going and going. They never stop. Manuel, Martin, Matthew McKinley. How's the base set looking? Um, base sets moving slowly. We knew that's how it would go because it's very expensive. Uh, but there are people bought in and they're making their payments. One guy's almost done with two spots, actually. Matt's Matthew, Maximum, Marcel, Marvin, Max, Matthew. They hate us because they ain't us. Pineapple Express. Try this one. Mauricio. Marco, Matthew, Maximilian, Matthew Irvin, Matteo, Marco Madrid. That's interesting. Uh, I don't see your bag. You got a big bag? You don't have a big bag, do you? Well, I did not see your bag, Mr. Mauricio. Mauricio from, uh, from October of last year, which again is not that long ago. So I'm looking at your orders. Seems like you should definitely have a bag. Let's try this again. Marcos, Martin, Manuel, Matthew, Manuel. Do you remember what was in your bag? Did you have particularly bad pulls by chance? Oh, no, I found your bag. You're fine. Your bag was just crinkled up. That's all. It was hard to read your name. <laughs> okay, this is what you had in there, by the way. Charizard, Tyranitar, Radiant Blastoise. Okay, cool. I'm going to add them over here. He lied, says Daobu. Who lied? There you go. Mauricio. Very nice. Welcome back, Mauricio. 
It is Walmart. Would you sell your base set two packs? I'm guessing you still have the booster box. Uh, yeah, I do have the booster box. Yeah. You know, uh, I decided all those years back not to open it. And so I canceled a box break on that box. And it has, ever since then, it like doubled in price. Isn't that funny? Okay. Joseph Vasquez. Scarlet Violet times two. You got it. Dawn of Legends times two. Dawn of Legends. Dawn of Legends. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Two Hollow Live Volume Two. Okay, Hollow Live, very popular. Here we are. I think I better start looking at the next Japanese Pokemon card set because that's probably getting ready to release. Here we go. Talking to my wife again today about potentially hiring someone to move out here and run my card stream for me, and I will take a lot more days off. Just don't know how that would work out. I think it'd be really hard choosing somebody to do it. Here we are. Oh. Mm -hmm. I still really prefer a girl streamer. Here we are. She doesn't even have to be on camera. I'll run it for you, mister. I've no doubt that if I offered it for like a dude to do, there'd be like a million... Offers. It's a very cool job, by the way. Why, mister? Uh, for that diversity. Here we are. Sarta. Here's Tian Shinhan. Head to head. Good for you, TCC. You need some time off. Sandal incoming. Yes, not, not only do I need a time off, but I need to think of a, a future where the channel is run by a group and I re eventually retire. The stream isn't the same without you. Well, consider this. If I didn't have to run the stream, I could make all kinds of other content. So I could make gaming content again. I could make um, informative videos. I could uh, do financial analysis. I could make all kinds of videos if I didn't do this every night. So if I had somebody who's capable of running this very smoothly, very correctly, uh, that would work very well. Joseph Vasquez, Mr. Joseph. Mr. Is smart, strive to be smart. Yeah, I could finally work on my OnlyFans. You know how depressing it is that I don't get to work on my OnlyFans? Jamie Manuel, Joseph Vasquez. I could be working on my OnlyFans. How about someone who dresses like a woman? <laughs> um, that would work perfectly fine. <laughs> Mr. I don't want those hollows. Thank you, guys. When you donate your hollows, uh, I'll eventually pick through them and try sending a couple off to CGC, and we'll use those as giveaways in the future. All right, there we go. Okay, Walmart, right? So for those of you who have just joined, type in Walmart, and this will add you to the giveaway. Kevin O'Neill, Ancient Origins Loose Pack. Okay, so an Ancient Origins Loose Pack. Where'd he go? Here he is. That was in the Cosmic Eclipse box for some reason. Eevee, Golet, Ralts, Vaporeon. Nice. Entei, nice. So unfortunately, it is a cold pack, but your your rare is Entei. And your verse hollow is, reverse hollow is Vaporeon. The real problem is that the Vaporeon is off-centered, unfortunately. If that was a well-centered Vaporeon, I would even say that that pack is a hit. Ancient Origins Vaporeon would have been very nice. Okay, Kevin O'Neill. There it is. Michael Schron, there is an update on my other slabs that was not sent out. One of the cars that would have been a PSA base and a few others. John hasn't updated me also. 
Oh, you're, you're asking if I have an update for you. I'm going to copy and paste your whole message. Actually, I'm going to screenshot it. Open paint here. There you go. I messaged John about this. John doesn't always message back when we're having an issue, and I need him to do that. Need him to stop, because I think what he likes to do is he goes to his other work, maybe something that's not having any kind of issue, right? And so he works on that. <laughs> I want to hear John says that he definitely doesn't have the uh, slabs. And then what I'll do is I'll do a search for them because I haven't seen them over here either. What would be the total cost for the shipping, the express grade for... So when you do mail-in grading, there is typically a $25 refer, ref, uh, return shipping for that set. But just because you're special, Kingston, I'll do $9 for you, okay? You're not really sending in very many cards. And in fact, maybe I should update that for a lot of people because maybe I would receive more mail-in grades. But I'm kind of pressuring people to just do large orders for now. We don't want a ton of small orders. All right, Gerardo with the G. Gerardo, I just got to find your, your bag now. Here he is. Boy, I'm so tired of this particular song that's playing. It's like too hopeful or something. It makes me angry. Undertale. There we go. Bring me back that good Minecraft music. Listen to that. So ambient. I love it. <laughs> okay. So we have Francis Santos, Two English Paramount War. What's up, Francis Santos? Two Paramount War. One Disney. That's correct, Kingston. Do you ship to Idaho? <laughs> yeah, I ship to Idaho. I was just pulling your leg. Of course I ship to Idaho. <laughs> That's a silly question. <laughs> I just got a email that I want to read real fast. <laughs> All right. That doesn't seem right. Hold on. Hmm. Weird. Okay. Do I ship to the heart of North Korea? Yes. Here's Kuzan. I would if I could. I don't think they allow that. North Korea has a thing about people enjoying capitalist uh, luxuries. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Aha, uh -huh. all right, the Hundred Acre Woods. This is for our friend, Mr. Francis Santos. Be sure to let me know if you have a bag, guys. It helps a lot. I don't know if he has a bag. Here he is. He does. Your dad. My dad. Mr. My dad would beat up your dad. My dad was really tall. I'm about six foot, but I think he was about six four, and he was uh, in the Navy. I think he'd actually beat your dad up. I'm pretty sure he would. If they were the same age, I think he would. Here's Ice Cube. I had a, I had a tough dad. So let's see who won. Maverick R is the winner. Everyone thinks their dad would beat up someone else's dad. My dad was a violent kind of guy anyways. There we go. All right. Beautiful. He liked all kinds of violent things. Can you put it under Aaron Rodriguez? <laughs> Absolutely. 
Look at that sleeve. Where'd it go? You know, one of the things my dad kind of instilled in me when I was younger, my dad killed a lot of animals. Looking back on it, it's kind of odd because I don't think guys do that anymore. There we go. You, you notice that people in our society today aren't as obsessed with like hunting anymore. But it, that was a kind of a big thing in the past, wasn't it? Hunting was more like it was like a activity, wasn't it? We don't do that so much anymore. He would kill all the animals he could find. Eric Lovato, one all terrier break. You got it, man. All right. And he would show me and make me participate. He loved setting up traps that would kill pests. He loved showing me how to gut things. He was always very interested in those things. All right, let's grab this. Mistress Dad was a killer. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. I remember we had a troublesome dog one time and that dog disappeared. And I'm wondering how it disappeared now. There we are. He just said that it was gone. I'm thinking about it because I'm talking to you about it. I wonder if he just killed that dog. All right, give me a number. Mr. Dad was the one who shot Bambi's mom. <laughs> that dog disappeared so quietly and I never knew what happened. And it just was gone in a day. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, it just wraps around. So we're going to go with four. One, two, three, four. There we go. Okay, JD in. One, two, three, four. Four is Nectaria combos. Cool, man. Did you guys have tacos right after your dog disappeared? Uh, no, but I ate other things like deer meat and a lot of fish. And uh, what else did we eat? I guess we had raw turkey. Or not raw turkey. We had uh, wild turkey. That's about it. Nothing else. There we go. My dad would do this thing where he'd become annoyed with the bird in the neighborhood. And he would find it and shoot it out of the tree. But he did it real sneaky. Probably because you're going to get in trouble if you do that. There we go. Right. He's trying to say your dad cooked your dog. All right. Soup. I remember my brothers were always a lot more violent than me toward animals, too. I didn't understand them. They were real violent toward animals. My dad was violent toward animals like a farmer might be or a hunter. My brothers were crazy. I think they were semi-interested in torturing animals. I don't know what would make somebody like that, but they sure were. And I did not like that very much at all. Let's do the Imakuni Dodo next. Here we are. I have a neighbor that shoots stray dogs in the neighborhood. That's an early sign of a serial killer. That's what I've heard. That is what I've heard. No one in my family is famous for being a serial killer, though. <laughs> Yet. There we go. Emma Cooney. Whoo! <laughs> so this is Emma Cooney's Doduo. Graded 10 from the XY Evolutions. And he's going to be very similar. We're going to make him one out of six. There we go. Ooh, not that you know of Mr. They're good at hiding it. <laughs> Is that right? They just hide it. People that eat people. What do you think person tastes like? Bet it tastes good. Cody Rogers says he'll take a Topps movie pack. Okay. Cody Rogers. 
Tops movie pack. I know what they taste like. They taste delicious. Mmm. <laughs> you don't need all that flesh, do you? Okay. You're going to pull the stairwell. There we go. <laughs> Human flesh is like stringy pork and oddly like chicken according to the foot taco story. There we go. Everything's like chicken in the end. When you add enough seasonings to it. Not like the white people know. White people don't know how to season. <laughs> Mewtwo. Uh, Ash. Can my brother and I split a box of Star Birth? We both ordered 15 packs, says David Philado. I think we could do that, David. What about ass? Has anyone in here not eaten ass? There we go. Cody Rogers. Lovely. Dog milk is good. Love this song. What is this called? This one's called Concrete Halls. Super Dan, one spot in the Lugia slab break, please. You got it, Super Dan. Alan Abale, finally done with my slab away. You got it, Mr. Allen. So, Alan Abale, char number. Let me go grab it. Mr. Allen. guys will want to see this one really cool ready Ooh, blaine's charizard now you'll notice this is 9.5 but look at the design of the slab see the corners so this is old cgc grading standards so this card might very well turn into a psa 10 Old, old CGC grading standards were unusually harsh. There we go. Sounds good, Kingston. David Filler Doe. So, David, do we have a box of Starbird? Let me see if I have a box of Starbird. All right, so the problem for you, David, is I actually don't have a sealed box. Give me a second. See this box right here, David? This is the last box, and it's already open and partially open. So, David, I don't want to mess things up for you and your brother. Um, why don't I put this on credit? We're on our last box. Lost Abyss. Yeah, you guys talk about it amongst yourself and see what you decide on, okay? We have the new Scarlet set too, by the way. Plenty of Scarlet. <laughs> Human can't say that I never eat one because I haven't. The only one I had was women and wow, love it.
I'll let them keep thinking about it. David Philodo and Travis Philodo. There it is. Antonio Cuevas. Antonio Cuevas. And twenty dollars tortoise slab away. You got it, Antonio. All right, that's updated. Lost Abyss is good, says David. Okay, you got it. So that finishes off this case. Toss the empty box over here. By the way, did you guys see that I cleaned my room up? Let me show you my room a little bit now. So you can see it's much cleaner over there. Need to order some more shelves, I think. We both have bags. Wow, you guys are the best. <laughs> Looks the same, try harder. Oh no, it's way cleaner. That is significantly cleaner than it was. Okay, this will be Travis, and this will be David. Good luck. I would love it if you guys pulled that alternative art Giratina. That would be amazing. Two brothers opening up a, a box of Lost Abyss together. One gets the worm. Okay, so that's David. We're going to start with Travis. He moved one box and called it cleaner. No, 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 no. Not true at all. It is, it is way cleaner. I guess you guys didn't really see it the last day, did you? You should have seen how unbelievably trashed it was in here. I don't show off the room every day, right? So, Okay, good luck to Travis. Travis gets a hollow. Winner takes hit, mister. Oh, well, yeah, of course. Oh, you mean all the hits? Oh, no, you just said that. He just pulled the... the uh, hit. <laughs> so it's the scientist though, sadly. That's okay. You might have a rainbow. Earthworm Jim was a good game on Sega. That's Giratina. Rotom. It's possible that you get a rainbow rare in yours, okay? So if you got the rainbow rare, you would take all of his cards, I believe. Why did they put those stupid man trainers in there? Well, you know, every hit in a box can't be valuable. That's just how it is. Okay, there we go. How would you guys feel if I had a little Game Boy, like a Game Boy Advance or something, and I played Pokemon on it while we're streaming? That's Travis. Now for David. Good luck, David. What an amazing sound. I love the uh, build up and then the wind down too. So cool. You can make it part of the live shop. Well, you know, I was thinking maybe people make like $5 donations to mute each other. What if instead of muting each other, you can make a $5 donation to make me play the game for five minutes? And, um, you know, over a long period of time, we'd finish the game. Here's Aerodactyl. So instead of muting someone, you could be like, play Pokemon for five minutes. Okay, here is the Perserker. 
Hold on, let me check this music. It takes five minutes for a Game Boy to warm up. The old Game Boy? <laughs> I could get an emulator and play on like a cell phone, maybe. I don't know how that all works. Okay, here's Pidgeot. Very good. They ran on tubes, you know. That's only $60 an hour. <laughs> I know, definitely not enough money. <laughs> too funny, man. <laughs> well, I don't want it to last for too long if you order a round of the game because people are waiting for their cards to be open. Then on the other hand, if it's too cheap, people would just order a bunch of game time and then once again, you're stuck with people only being allowed to watch the game get played. Boo, says David. I'm sorry, David. Congratulations to Travis. Fill it oh. Okay, Travis. Uh, Travis with the TR. Over here. Would Nintendo smack you for playing on stream? No. <laughs> Nintendo doesn't care about that. Oops. Fake Game Boys, the Mini Pro. Yeah? How did it work? Was it good? Maybe you guys could donate. If you guys have the actual Game Boy, you could donate it to me and I'd play it and I'd, I'd mail it back to you if you wanted. I don't know if anyone's got like an emulator for Pokemon or something, but I'd mail it back to you. Mm, I don't like this too much. Let's try Droopy Likes Ricochet. Quay Bus. Mauricio, Pokemon English, Scarlet Violet. Here goes, Mr. Mauricio. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm. Wish it was larger, says Greek Boy. Games are hella expensive, though. Oh, I see. Launcher Gardevoir. Nice. Cloth. I am Cloth. I will send you a Pokemon Red for free. Well, what you could do is send me the stuff I need to stream the game, and then just I'll mark a label to mail it back to you when we're done. So you don't even have to donate it to me for free. I can just mail it back to you. There. Ooh. Tough round there, Mauricio. Mostly hollows. Let's see. Here we are. Ooh, I love this song. This song that's about to play, definitely probably my favorite Minecraft song is this one. Those Spose port bench older Pokemon games over to Switch soon. That'd be nice when they good. Yeah, definitely when they good. There we go. Very nice. Here's Abraham Rios. Small. You know, it'd be funny is if you guys mailed me in a game to play live and then I mailed it back to you and the save is still on the game. You'd be like, this is the game, you right? So small slab break for Abraham. Here you go. Then you could be like, hey, that's the game save from the live stream. <laughs> Super Dan says, three snipes, please, mister. Okay, one Disney. Where's the Disney? We're never getting to 200 viewers. I tell you what, if we get to 180, I'll, I'll still open at 180. Two lost abussies. You got it. Two lost abussies. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
soup Dan. Aaron Rodriguez for the Hidden Fate Slab Giveaway. The Hidden Fate Slab Giveaway. We're on Imakuni now, though. I'm sorry. Oh, wait. Oh, I see. Wait, I'm, I'm confused. Wait, what did Aaron Rodriguez want? I don't quite understand what you ordered here, Aaron. If it's too late, then grab a pack of battle styles. Oh, yes. Okay, no, no, no. I see. So we'll get you the pack of battle styles. It wasn't clicking. I get it now. I thought you were referring to shipping. How how close are we to a new case of a bussy? Here we are. I don't talk about that, okay? Remember, you can't ask any searching questions. Here's Karina and Necrozma. He's just sending you free money. Some people have done that. I know you want to know. Aaron Rodriguez. Keep the cards. Oh, thank you very much. Okay. So we'll take this, put it over here. And uh, how does this little guy look? We'll put him into... Uh, this is the next Pokey, bro. We'll slide him in. I'm a little tired of Undertale music. What's this song called? Wait. This song's okay. Jeff Leon. Did you guys notice? I'm not really coughing too much. One Disney... One Paramount War English. Here we are. Meteor. Have a good night, says. How do I say your name? Is it hi? Ooh. I don't even know what Disney show this was. Looks cool, though. It's pretty neat looking. That looks like a Chinese one, though. You can tell by the sword. It's hi -yi. Jeff Leon. It's Hia, like from Yu Yu Hakusha. Wow, that's super nerdy. Hia. Christian Garcia, five English Scarlet Violet, five Triple Beat. You got it. Okay, five Triple Beat. He wants the beat drop. She would beat Bob. my face is Marshall Weber. It's pronounced Steve. <laughs> That's right. Well, this is why Tammy never pulled the card. Look at the rarity on it. Is Tammy here? Check this out, Tammy. 
Christian Garcia. This is the card Tammy Lowe wanted. Check that out. Wow, nice, man. So cool. All right, we're going to clip that. <clears throat> we're going to clip that for sure. So this is for Christian Garcia. There we go. Most wholesome card. That is a wholesome card. He also got Shuck here. Shuck's looking like he's uh, posing for you, like a model. Okay, here we are. That'll be about tree fitty. Oh, Arcanine EX. Bark. Scarlet Violet, one of the best base sets made. It's great to know that you can actually finish the set by yourself. <laughs> right. <Okay. coughs> cool. Toss it over there. Have a little sip. <laughs> Skeledurge. That's right. Triple Beat. We didn't open a lot of Triple Beat. I was having a problem with the supplier. It wouldn't actually send me any cards. Okay, there's the Dene. Cold. The line's getting pretty short, guys. Send those orders in. It's 2 a.m. That's for Christian Garcia. Wow. Wow. Nice round, Christian. I have a bag, says Christian Garcia. Let's go find it. There we go. <laughs> Joseph Vasquez, Dawn of Z Legends. Dawn of the Legends. Boop. One Paramount War. Hold on, let me change this music up. All right. Joseph Vasquez. I forgot Triple Beat existed. that down. Mm -hmm. We got these two. How much is Ultra Prism? You never put it in the description. Oh, that's why no one's buying Ultra Prism. Oh my god. The break is right. <laughs> Ultra Prism. That would explain why we have not sold any Ultra Prism. There we go. <laughs> It is updated. You have to refresh to see the price. But actually, I can just show you. Here it is. Ultra Prism comes out to the same price as Unified Minds. There we go. Don't we have a new set coming out soon? There should be a new Japanese set coming out. Also, one Hollow Life. Oh, let me jump back over here. Yep, one Hollow Life. Okay. Chi Chi Goku. Okay. All right, very good. Modern scares me, says Alex.
So Joseph Vasquez, you're gonna be over here. Jeff Leon says one Paramount War English. Okay, got it, Jeff. There we go. Monkey D. Luffy. I'm going to skip this song. I don't think it's very good. What's this one? Oh, yeah. I like this song, too. This is actually made by somebody called Kumi, Kumi Tanioka. I didn't know that. So this one's not made by the uh, other person. Hmm. It's really weird. Snorlax. Chikorita 10. Did you hear about Super Rally Pokemon Battle in Japan? No, I did not hear about that. Here's Psyduck. And here is Golem. Okay. Do you think the Japanese Pokemon market will stay this crazy? Uh, I presume it will. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, people thought that it was... It was falling apart before, and look at it now. It's just as strong. So it's weird. It's like people keep betting against Pokemon cards and then losing. You got, like, the Umbreon. I thought the Umbreon was going to crash. Umbreon's holding his value. Really wild. I ordered with the Zell, says Ruben. Yes. So I believe you're next because there's no more PayPal orders. PayPal is empty. And so over here, we have to refresh... Mr. Ink Urban Ink and Ruben Robles. So you guys are waiting for your, your rounds. So three Disney packs for Mr. Eric Guzman. You got it. Do you think the Japanese Pokemon market will stay this crazy? Oh, yeah. I don't just think it's Pokemon, though. You know, I think it's the whole idea of collecting. It's really taking off. People enjoy collecting. Iron Man. Beauty. And uh, this is one of my favorite Disney princesses. Sleeping Beauty. I love the artwork in this movie. It's absolutely crazy how good the artwork is. Very unique. So cool. Okay. Mr. Eric Guzman. There are two gay dads kissing in a Disney cartoon. They are. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it, it's funny. Like, what are you trying to say? Are you saying that that's wrong? You know what I mean? Like, so as a society, we either believe that that's wrong or it's not. So if you're saying it's okay for two gay guys to have a life together or get married, have kids, well, then... Are you all in or are you still like, nah, I don't like that. You know, that makes me uncomfortable. Uh, something about that doesn't sit right with me. And then are you on the other side? Are you somebody who's like, listen, I'm religious and that is evil. You know what I mean? Like, are you on that side? You know, it's a really fascinating thing. So, yeah, you're seeing two gay dads kissing Disney because 
the people who run Disney have decided, all right, so being gay is the same as being straight. There's nothing wrong about it. There's nothing lesser about it. So we'll just make gay people kissing. But then people see it and they don't like it, you know? Old Disney would never, mister. I think you're right, Alex. Old Disney would not have done that. But, you know, it's not just Old Disney that wouldn't have done that. I, I don't think anyone would have done that back then. I don't think any movies would have done that. Okay, so we have Ruben Rubbles. He says, two Crown Zenith. Ooh, I think we're getting a new box of Crown Zenith. Hmm, let's see. Oh, no, we're not. We've already got some. Two Lost Abyss. All right, you got it, man. Move the Star Wars out of the way. Cryonic Chamber opens slowly. It's not evil because it's not, but it's, I, I think it's natural to feel uncomfortable because it's not norm. Walt Disney lets out a howl. <laughs> I wonder if people will ever feel that comfortable with homosexuality in the first place, you know? Here's Ditto and Glaceon. Damn, Glaceon. Here we go. The ancient Rome was really gay. Were they? Here we are. Are you talking about the ancient Rome right before the collapse? Or are you talking about the ancient Rome when they were rising to power? Here we go. Ruben Robles. I was uh, listening to some scholars talk about how Rome really changed over time. This popped up on my TikTok. And they were saying when Rome formed, it was actually a very strictly conservative culture. And that's why it was such a powerful society. And it slowly became a decadent culture that nobody really cared to take care of anymore. No one wanted to go to war. The leaders didn't care. The people didn't care. And that was all part of its downfall. There we go. Bud Light will make you trans. Well, it's got Bud. It's got Bud right in the title. Okay, cool. Ruben Robles. Okay. And then we have one more Eric Guzman order. Three more Disney packs. <laughs> Let's get to it. Here we are. I'm stocking up on hand sanitizer and toilet paper. <laughs> For the collapse. Here we go. I don't think the United States would ever truly collapse. But you know what I do think could happen? I think it could see some pretty hard times. And I think a lot of wealthy people could find themselves moving to Europe or to the UAE or something like that. Maybe to Australia, maybe to New Zealand. If we ever had an, an actual collapse. Yeah, I think you'd see a lot of migration out of the United States by the wealthy. There we go. You'd know you huff it all the time. <laughs> oh, that's cruel. That's cruel. I feel like we need something new on this channel. Somebody give me an idea. I want to hear something new. What's some new stuff we can open or new stuff we can do a pack break on or whatever, right? I doubt any developed country will truly collapse. Oh, yeah? Let's do a pack break on a pack of evolving skies. <laughs> Magic the Gathering, says Sapodak. Beanie Babies. I'm all out, mister. My last one was pasta. What? <laughs> we need some new ideas, guys. Freshen things up a bit. Make the stream interesting. Ah, oh, my eyes itchy. Strip. All right, I'm going to take my shirt off now. Oh. So we are all out of orders. I have nothing to do. It is 2.30... We have not streamed the full three hours. Union Arena. <laughs> Vintage Digimon and sports cards. Haha. -ha. 
we could get sports cards. <coughs> we do have a, quite a few guys who like to open up Digimon. I sent an order, says Rath McJumpson. There it is. Give me a moment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cough. Monkey says, open the Exalted pack. I can't do that. We didn't get enough views for it. Okay, so was that Jeff? That wasn't Jeff. Hold on. Let me refresh. We did not get the views to open it. I'm sorry. Roger Gray, one bolt grade for the pointing Sonic card, two FF Rebellion card, and cut an NFL five pack. Okay. Yeah, so this is getting cut. Let's start by grabbing your bag. Roger Gray. Crazy Bones opening, open vampire high cards. We must respect the rules of the pack. More Weiss cry gasm. Explain the shipping price. Do you charge per card or is it the box? Um. Uh, the box. Gotta feed the scissors. Rules are for wimps. Okay, here we go. Oh, yes. Really good. Really good. Dollar wheel on a pack of your choice. There we go. Come on, guys. Give me some good ideas. I want to hear some interesting ideas. <laughs> More wax packs. Lots of oddball stuff from the 80s and 90s. True. We opened a couple Sonic packs today because people will enjoy that. How much will shipping be for a box of five cards? I told you we'll do nine. We'll do nine on that. One stream in a higher editor and make one video every other day. Hmm. Fortune Wheel like live customs. Okay, two of the rebellion. Pack breaks are always popular. Yes. new placemat don't like this placemat huh none of those were rare make your own mystery pack uh, we did that they're called the pokey bros pretty cool pack sell vintage video games I'm open minded Disney, Off Mal, Ramada, Ooh. Kidney Auction, Glacila, Tifa, <laughs> feeling that urge to cough. Roger Gray, thank you, Roger. Maybe start doing bounty hunts. I don't know what a bounty hunt is. <laughs> Oh, my eyes so itchy. Oh, there we go. Okay. Thank you, Roger. <laughs> Mix all the Weiss bulk and sell 10-card wacky Weiss pack. Oh, no. That sounds silly. Do your own Poke Game Show. The price is... The price is Mr. The price is Mr. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, my eyes itching like crazy. Okay, we have another order from Jeff Leon. One Disney, two Paramount. Hoodie box sport cards will sell very well in our high dollar. I think more people will view. Hoodie. Two Paramount water. Here we are. All right, very nice. Interesting mix of people. Could be funny. Get a small blender, put a vintage pack in it. Just leave it on the side and don't explain it. <clears throat> Sneak these up. All right. Here goes. Jeff Leon. It's 
get you a hit, Jeff. Oh, in fact, we did. Look at that. Okay, very nice. How about that, Jeff? One pack, one snipe. Make a wheel. We need to spin it. We pay to spin it. Can get neat stuff like free pack or bad, like you cut the pack. I really don't like the wheel idea. Here's Borsalino. Wow, you really did get a double hit here. How about that, man? Borsalina textured card. Here we are. Here's Emporio. Ooh, how nice. Okay, set that over there. Jeff Leon. I did the math. 13 by 5, 65, 74. So does 80 sound right? Yep, that sounds about right, Kingston. What do you really not like it? Uh, I really don't like it because I don't know where I'd store it and... I feel like it doesn't fit with the table setup very well. It doesn't really fit with our setup. Jeff. Nice job, Jeff. Jeff. We have these versus thems. Bring it onto the table and spin it, then remove it. Print a Playboy model and tape it on the slab. Speaking of slabs, I think one thing I can do is uh, start removing slabs that aren't selling from the table and replace them with new slabs. Are you getting one piece OP for Japanese BB? Uh, I'm sure I will. So the Lugia slab break is here. He's moving kind of slow right now. Fifty-four of those deck cards. What? All right. So there's more. <coughs> there's more room on the table. Beautiful. What kind of cards we got over here? I'm curious. What are these? some tops. A bounty hunt is a game where you have a cyber product listed as a prize for pulling a certain card in a set. I see what you're saying. Um, so it's like a prize on top of a prize. Funko says, I don't think the issue is bringing in new product. I think the issue is bringing in new people to buy product. Yeah, I agree. We need to get the viewership up. Um, that would mostly include me making videos that YouTube advertises. I have just two parts. First of all, I've been pretty busy, but the second part also is I haven't really been in the video <coughs> video making. <coughs> Man, I got this cough like crazy, dude. The video making mood. Hold on. All right, I've had my cough. So yeah, I haven't really been in the video making mood. What's the most expensive slab you have on the table? I've seen the shorts, says Corn Rules. Collab with the girl streamer. I probably won't do that. <laughs> Been a while since I've watched. What's up, Dylan? Where's Nogla, says Alex. <laughs> Nogla. <laughs> we like Nogla. All right, so I guess what I'll do is I'll just try to find something productive to do. There's, no, there's currently no orders in the queue. Oh, a sexy girl in a bikini open sneaker bunko. Hire a sexy girl in a bikini to open sneaker bunko. 
<laughs> All right. Well, I feel like I left a bit of a fingerprint on it almost. Have you guys seen these? So these are the empty packs. These are $10 a piece if you want one. I'll put one in, says Jordan Natividad. Sounds good. We were real slow on Monday. Monday was a real slow day. So if Monday's slow, usually Tuesday's slow. Because everyone's all out of money. That's generally what that means. A street team with stickers that we could put around our town or something on that line. If you did break out the Game Boy, do we know if you can change the stream title of the gaming to attract new viewers? What? YouTube is really bad at advertising streams right now. It's better to build up an audience by doing videos and then streaming on top of that. Yeah, I actually agree. I actually agree with that a lot. I haven't made any videos in a while. But that was true in the past too. your videos like the one you did at the start of each year when i worked on the game economist i made multiple videos a day and that channel was growing like so fast i don't really know what i would make a video about nowadays that wouldn't require a ton of time and work and effort and i already put so much effort into this that i i don't have a lot of um you know i don't feel like working i don't feel like working that much it's too much work we are we got an order I missed your videos. Yeah. Here we go. So, Jordan Nativa Dodd. Wow. Jordan did a really large order, everybody. So, he wants five Disney. And five. Ten battle styles. <laughs> Are you still going after those? You're funny, man. <laughs> He's still going after battle styles. Hire, hire somebody. Who would I hire and what would they do? I, I kind of wish I could hire somebody to make like long form content. You know what I mean? Currently, we only do shorts. Thoughts on the color blue? I've made videos and shorts based on your packages and what I buy from you on my channel. I have people that I know have come over to this channel. <laughs> That's crazy. Booked my bachelor trip out to the Ozarks. Did you really? That's cool, man. Your bachelor trip. All right. Um, video editing. Yes. I'd love to have somebody who can make a, a video. <coughs> <coughs> Hold on. Man, I got to cough so bad. It's crazy. Whew, man. This cough has ravaged me, man. Osage Beach, a nice spot. It is. That's the busiest part of Lake of the Ozarks. Miami Beach is better, says Cornrose. I feel that Lake of the Ozarks offers a unique experience from the boat, where if you get on the boat, there's so many boats in the lake at the same time that it feels like you're on a highway. 
And that is, I've never seen that anywhere else. It's so crowded, it's shocking. All right, here we are. Jordan Nativa died. Eat saltless pasta today. <laughs> what did I eat today? Here we are. <clears throat> I had turkey today. Here we are. Okay, lovely. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> we're still muted. My bad. Sorry about that. He did really good. He got that bad kitty card. Okay, King Draw. Luxray. Is the scar worth something? Oh, most definitely. He's an SR. And he's got kind of like a stamp. Here we are. Stonk Turner. <clears throat> Indeedy. Could we do a poll who would kiss Dalai Lama? Oh my god, dude. Murkrow Lux Ray. Okay, here's Salandit. Heat more. Oh my god. All 10 of the Battle Styles packs were cold. Jordan Nativa Dodd. Can you believe that? Oh my god. That's real stupid. Unbelievable. That's crazy, dude. I think it's time to give up on Battle Styles. Dude, I have to agree. You did really well on the Disney, though. All right, hold on. I got to cough again. Okay, Jordan. Here we are. Disney 100 is dropping a bit at the moment. Everyone cracking cases for Steamboat Willie. Oh, you mean like the singles are going down in price. Well, that's expected. Every card set does that. There we go. We have Jennifer Yap. She says she'll take five hollow live. What's up, Jennifer? <clears throat> Steamboat Willie SPR going for 12K now. Yep, we have um, quite a lot of this product on its way over. how the stream is so calm for now until I figure out what this cough is all about uh-huh one two I was kind of hoping that the cough would go away because I'm talking calmer in the stream 
Uh, and I do notice that there there is less coughing when you're talking calmer. Uh huh. <clears throat> there we go. Oh, I got to sneeze now. First of all, that coughing and now sneezing. <coughs> all right. <laughs> Try yelling the cough away. Just don't get pissed. Don't we think it was the carpet? We're still debating what the cause is. <coughs> oh, my God, dude. All right, that's me sneezing into my shirt. Jennifer, your cards come with the serving of COVID. Pull the carpet back a little. There we are. Okay. So we are now out of orders again. Uh, sorry, I'm sniffling. <clears throat> what would you guys like me to do while there's nothing to do, huh? Let's count the Lugia. It's that Mr. Miss 19. Eight spots in the Lugia break. Carpet cat litter. Get a Bissell carpet vacuum. I don't think we're going to hit this tonight. We've had a pretty consistent 150 viewers. Pretend you're playing the Game Boy. Practice. Do, 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 do. Have you still not deep cleaned the carpet? Not yet. Have you tried steaming in any other, streaming in any other room? Maybe something in the air. I've not tried that. Maybe I should like do a mock stream in another room. Maybe I should do a mock stream in another room. Okay, give me a moment. I think we have a new order. We have Mr. Jeff Leon. He says he'll take one hollow live. Talk about the Pokemon market and have Mike's side headed out for a video. <laughs> Do you cough when you're not streaming? I really don't cough very much when we're not streaming. Everyone coughs like once or twice in a day to like clear their throat. So when I'm not streaming, I might cough once, maybe twice, but not like... Not like the way I'm coughing right now. So I cough really badly in this room. But is it the room? Or is it that I'm having a vocal cord issue and they can't... The vocal cords haven't recovered. So if you think about it, I really only use my vocal cords a lot in this room. I talk a whole lot for like five hours. Here we are. All right. Boobies. So that's for Mr. Jeff. Why don't you see a doctor? Suppose I could. I think it's because I keep thinking that the cough's about to go away. I don't have any other issues other than the cough. Beatrice Modus is here and wants four Minecraft packs. You need to go to college and become a doctor so you yourself can figure out what's going on. Wrong. <laughs> Here we are. It never happened at the old place. Yeah. Fair point. Didn't you used to live in North Carolina? No. Okay, Beatrice. You yeah, have mesothelioma. That's right. All right. Very nice. One, two. Pillager is cute. Here we are with the fox. Aw, he's so cute. And 
the villager. Aw. I want that car, says Zach. Okay. This guy and this guy. We got Smoker, TNT, Fox, Crossbow. I want that card, Jealous. Yeah, another one. Did you see that? Ooh. There we go. Whose order is this? Beatrice Monis. Oh, wow. Ender Dragon. Super good. That's cool, man. Damn, that's cool, man. Pitbulls have fallen out of conversation. Yes. We need some new emojis as a result. The Iron Golem. Polar Bear. Enderman. Have you tried double streaming Twitch and YouTube? Maybe add TikTok. That's a good question. I did that a long time ago. Didn't didn't really contribute much, but I could try double streaming. Beatrice Moniz. I bought so many packs of these just to get the Glow Creeper. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I was eating what I thought was moldy muffins. When I looked at the package, it said blueberry. I ate blueberries. <laughs> Joshua Penn Hyro says, 10 Disney. Damn, dude. He's going deep. Big Disney orders, man. On Friday, I'm expecting the Disney orders to kind of jump. One, two. That's six. I haven't seen the Mario movie yet. All I do is work. All right. Very nice. I'm sorry. That one kind of tipped over. You need to take John on a play date and go see it. <laughs> I think John would be surprised. You're, you're what? You're going out? <laughs> How are eBay sales? I don't really sell stuff on eBay, so... <laughs> yeah, eBay has not ever been a significant part of my sales. Occasionally, I'll sell like one thing on eBay. And girl. Mm. Oh, nice man. An SP, very nice. 
All right. Can you move to the UK? I think I'd like that. Spidey Man. Profit has just been made. Oh. Look at this. Minnie Mouse. All right, lots of hollows. Very good. The old Disney movies are creepy. What? Which old Disney movies? Which old which old Disney movie was creepy? Jeff Leon, too jobless. Ooh. One Hollow Live. If you're bored, you can always take my hits from my side bag and put them in the box. <laughs> That's true. That's a hundred fifty dollar SB. Pretty good, says Monkey. Nice. Holy hoochie mommies. Pinocchio was creepy. I think because Pinocchio actually... Pinocchio actually showed you like a right and a wrong, basically. Like the island with the boys or whatever, where they got turned into donkeys. Yeah, it, it made you feel uncomfortable because it's closer to the real world. The way that doing what's comfortable and doing what you prefer to do can actually kind of cause decay in your life, cause a bad thing in your life, yeah. You you could say that the island of the boys or whatever it was called, the pleasure island, it was, uh, it was like a degeneracy thing, wasn't it? But that's a real thing. Coachman scared the crap out of me. Yeah. Well, they removed that from movies now, so you have nothing to fear. Why would we want to teach our kids those kind of morals? When we can make everything like Frozen. Let it go, let it go. There we go. We, we talk about this subject a lot, about how kid movies are so careful now not to be upsetting. And I, I think it's actually very bad for people's development. You could take a road trip with the wife. Just rent an RV. Mister should collaborate more with other creators. There's an actual chicken getting his head cut off in the tunnel scene. Give me a moment. All right. So Matthew Bain, one V-star, new bag. Hello, Matthew. Frozen is good, but you're right. You know, I actually went to the movie theaters and watched Frozen with my uh, then-girlfriend uh, and her family. I thought it was one of the most stupid Disney movies I ever watched in my entire life. When I watched it, I was so frustrated and annoyed when I watched it. I could not believe that people liked it so much. I thought it was absolutely horrendous. Matthew Bain. Let's see. We got Machamp. 
and I kind of stopped watching all Disney movies at that point. I was like, that was so terrible. You're just old, mister. You don't understand. No, uh, I would have been 28. When, when did Frozen come out? So it came out in 2013. That was 10 years ago. Oh, so I was about 24 when I watched it. I thought it was one of the most shit Disney movies I'd ever seen. It was atrocious. And um, I stopped watching Disney movies at that point. We are. Matthew Bain. In fact, many of these cards were opening. I don't recognize any of the characters because I just don't watch anything Disney anymore. Matthew Bain. Frozen, Brave, and Tangled. Now, I saw Brave and I saw Tangled. They were okay. They were just okay. That, and that's it. It's a successful franchise. Yeah, there's a lot of stupid people in the world. Most of society is poor. Matthew... I would never want my children to watch something like Frozen. I'd want them to watch something that's more difficult. There we go. Matthew Bain. It's funny because what I would probably want my kids to watch is something like Pinocchio, where there was the coachman and the degeneracy island. I would want my kids to watch something like that because they're introduced to the sort of uh, fun frivolity that Pinocchio has in a variety of scenes. And there's a story of hope and wanting to be a real boy and all this and the concept of the conscious, which was Jiminy Cricket. But also you had the fox and the cat and they were sort of like these scoundrels who are there to sort of like, you know, take advantage of you, your naivety. But then the Degeneracy Island, he gets tricked into it and it's uh, it destroys him. So I guess one of the reasons why I like the show so much is it, it, it depicts what it like, what it's like to become a loser. Nobody likes to do that anymore. Nobody's a loser in Frozen. It, in, in Pinocchio, you can go to the Degeneracy Island and become a huge effing loser. And they'll turn you into a donkey and you'll work a salt mine and you'll be nobody with no money and you'll have a terrible life. That is so real. And I want my kids to be able to understand that that's how it works. You know, there's a lot of people who are stuck in life that way. But they have to somehow navigate the world to avoid that. But most people aren't able to navigate the world that way. But don't worry, Frozen sold a lot. Ah, oh, Frozen is trash, man. It's not even a... It was based on... Frozen was based on Hans Christian... Hans Christian Andersen wrote the original fairy tale for Frozen. I don't know what it was called. But similar to many of his other stories that Disney rips off of, because Disney doesn't really make a lot of original content. They just rip off of actual artists. His original stories are dark and sad and realistic. And uh, he has a lot of great stories you've never heard of. In fact, you should go read them. There was The Snowman. Love that story. I read that one and I loved it. And I think another one called uh, The Yew Tree or something like that. Another excellent story. If Disney adapted those into Disney movies, they'd ruin them. They would ruin it into like a singing, dancing tree with a happy ending. The point of the story, the Yew Tree story, is it's horribly sad. Uh, and that's what makes it good. And um, no, I hated it. I hated Frozen so much. I was like, how is this pop popular? Jeff Leon, one Disney and I'm off to bed. Here we are. I got the double whammy with Frozen. Now I'm living through the nightmare 10 years later and there's two movies to watch. Yeah, let's get sad, everyone. You might be stupid if you like Frozen. Has Disney ever done a Red Riding Hood movie? I don't think they have. Have they? All right, let's snip this. Jeff Leon. I know people don't like to hear somebody else dislike the thing that they love. So I understand that. Um, but it is how I feel about it. But you don't have to like the things that I like either. You can say the things I like are dumb. Here we are. You can say, I don't like your favorite color. I don't like your choice of music. I don't like the stories that you read. <clears throat> what do you think about Lion King? Lion King's a masterpiece. Lion King's one of the best movies that they ever made. Yeah, Lion King's excellent. And it will continue to be excellent for many, 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 many years. The things you like are dumb, says Monkey. <laughs> you got me. There we go. Jeff Leon. I hate Disney too, but from the beginning. Pixar does a better job. 
Do we need to slander long tummies? Yeah, you can slander long tummies, for example. When I watched Frozen, I felt less intelligent as a result of watching it. Here's Jeff Leon, one hollow life. Here we are. For sure going to bed now, says Jeff. <laughs> what do you think about live action Disney movies? I never watch them. I stopped watching, well, so I stopped watching Disney after Frozen, right? That was in 2013. So I never really watched any of the live action movies at all. And I don't recognize many of these characters that are coming out of the packs because I never watched those movies. Here we are. Iron Giant is anti-gun communist propaganda. <laughs> Here we are. Here's Joshua Pinhiro. And I, I did watch the first, uh, the first and the second season of Mandalorian to completion. I hated it. I watched it because my wife wants to watch it. We haven't watched the third season. I would be okay if I never watched it. Joshua Pinhiro, just terrible. All right, let's get this graded. I love the Western style of it. <laughs> Have you watched an actual Western? It's not very Western. They just copy the music and maybe a little bit of the pacing. That's where it all ends. Here we are. The actor's good. I like the actor. He's great. Also, Baby Yoda's very cute. Don't watch Book of Boba Fett. It's pure garbage. <laughs> I I have not watched it because like all Disney franchises that are coming out of, uh, uh, like all uh, Star Wars stories that are coming out of the Disney franchise, I, I'm very uninterested. Movie 9 was dark and good. Wallace and Gromit. Let the record state, I absolutely love Wallace and Gromit. I love it to death. I was very saddened that the original voice actor uh, has passed. I hope they continue making Wallace and Gromit with the new voice actor. Wallace and Gromit is a treasure. There you are. Joshua Pinhiro. They made a very successful movie a long time ago, didn't they? The Were Rabbit. Wallace and Gromit. I remember when I was a kid and I watched the very first Wallace and Gromit where they got in the rocket ship and went to the moon because it was made out of cheese. I was so in love with the show at that point. And then they made several other and they were also very good. Got me looking it up. You don't know Wallace and Gromit? Damn, dude. Wallace and Gromit's amazing. It's a very calm, relaxing show. It's not really... I would say the problem with Wallace and Gromit is it's not very story-driven at all. It's really just a man who loves cheese and crackers, and he's with his very clever dog, and that's it. That's the whole story. It's almost like – it's like that formula you find in so many shows, like Charlie Brown. By the way, that's another show I absolutely adore, Charlie Brown. I can't get enough of it. Charlie Brown. But Wallace and Gromit is kind of similar to that, I guess. That sort of like man and his dog feeling. Do you like Chicken Run? I thought Chicken Run was very good. It doesn't have the charm of Wallace and Gromit. Guy who voiced Wallace was a treasure. Wallace and Gromit is way ahead of his time. <laughs> I always dislike the clay animation. It, it can be creepy at times. All right, Ryan, Sh Ryan Shapiro, box of G from the P. A what? Box of G from the P? What does that mean? You have to help me out here, Ryan. I don't know what that means. And I don't want to start opening a... Oh, Ghost of the Past. Gotcha. So let me find out how many packs that is real fast. He sent $160. That's a lot. That's a big, big order. Ghost of the Past is $8. So that's what, 20 of them? All right. So you want one of these. The Wrong Trousers movie was my favorite. Trousers was uh, it, it was just a classic like bad guy villain story. That's all. 
yeah, I would say Wallace and Gromit doesn't have very much to it. It's like a short. You know what I mean? There's not a lot of character development. <laughs> the penguin disguised as a rooster. Hold on. There we go. So 160 divided by, oops, hold on. Yeah, so 20, okay. Please tell me that's not all being open. I think it is. Wallace and Gromit's amazing. I like how you guys have me criticizing movies. Let me see if I can remember um, why I didn't like Frozen, by the way. It was a really long time ago that I watched it, and I watched it in movie theaters, if I recall. What's the plot of, of, of Frozen again? She's supposed to get married to a guy, but he's actually a bad guy or something like that. didn't like it because you were jealous you did not own your own reindeer mister should play my stepmom mom is a futinari on pc what? i had the opposite experience with frozen i went in expecting a bad show and really enjoyed it we're very different jarmo whenever i go to the movie theater i generally expect to hate whatever it is i'm watching um, that is because I generally hate everything that I'm watching. So I get very frustrated with just about anything. And then I especially did not like Frozen. Whenever I go to the movie theater, and going to the movie theater is like an activity I don't like to do in general. So like this, this Mario movie, I'm supposed to go see it, I guess. I kind of really don't want to. That's why I haven't seen it yet. If I actually enjoyed movies, I guarantee you we would have seen it on the release. So I generally don't like any movie and I hate going to the movie theaters. And then some movies I go, okay, that wasn't too bad. And then other movies go, I wish I could have all my time back and my money and curse the people who made this movie. <laughs> I hate going to the cinema. Yeah, I do too. I feel like generally movies don't challenge me in any intellectual way like you know what a movie is uh, there's a story to be told you could read that story in a minute you could go to the cliff notes mario rescues the peach who is stolen by bowser the end those are the cliff notes so what is a movie it's just that but stretched out over two hours and you watch it it's it's just that but it's stretched out over two hours who the F cares what happens in those two hours? So, but if you make a really good movie, well, then you sit there and you go, wow, this is really exciting to watch how the story plays out. Oh, a little twist, right? So that's a good movie is when you stretch out a story over two hours, a story again that I could read in one minute in a cliff notes, but, but it's so enjoyable the way you've stretched the, this story out. I watch it. Nobody ever does a good job of that. Everyone's very boring and predictable. The casting is wrong. The acting is unbelievable. Like, I look at it and I go, you're just acting. You don't feel any of these things. There's CGI in everything now. I hate CGI. CGI is so annoying. It's just some guy on a computer making fake things for my eyes to see. So that's five times four, which is 20. It's about the journey. Precisely. So a movie is about the journey. And I honestly hate most of those journeys. They're very unintelligent. It's just boom, boom, whoa, bro. Oh, I hit the ground while kneeling. Whoa, he's a superhero. Oh, no. Will the bad guy win? Duh, duh, duh. Oh, he doesn't? 
You know, it's the same shit. Every single movie is the same shit. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it so much. And sometimes a movie surprises me and it really gives me something to talk about afterwards. I go, wow, I can't stop thinking about that movie. Can't stop thinking about it. Can't can't stop talking about it. But you know that's so actually rare for that to occur? It's so actually very rare for that to occur. All the movies are super predictable. They're very simple plots. They're very simple character developments. They don't explore anything interesting about the human condition or about nature. It's just some CGI action scene. Oh, man. And then when Mario totally went Mario mode, whoa. You know what I mean? It's all the same. It's the death of me. I can't stand it. The only reason I like something like Wallace and Gromit is because it's very calm and he's eating cheese and crackers. And I happen to like cheese and crack crackers. So that's very nice. I like his cheese and crackers a lot. Did you ever watch John Wick? It? Hell no. John Wick's a perfect example of a show that makes me want to vomit. So John Wick, it's a guy who's all choreographed doing his heavy, heavy bullets. Boom, boom, boom. Whoa, you didn't expect him to kill 10 people, but he's only one guy. Whoa, that's John Wick. I hate those movies. I hate them so passionately. I cannot stand them. But it's Keanu. I don't like Keanu Reeves either. He's some super rich guy. I don't really care that he's acted well in some movies. He went to like a video game conference and said, oh, I, I like you. And then everyone was very much on his jazz. So that's great. He's just some actor in some movie. I don't really care. There you go. He kills hundreds of people. Yeah, I, I care so little. Care so little. All right, let's get this ghost rare. We're going to get the ghost rare. Keanu Reeves can suck a dick. It's very easy, by the way, to be nice to people when you're a multimillionaire celebrity. So it's not like it was some special difficult thing for him to you know call somebody amazing at like a some video game thing the matrix was good though the matrix was good not because of keanu necessarily keanu maybe he was well cast but the writing of the matrix was good that's what made matrix good and you're right the matrix was a good movie i agree with that the matrix was excellent Mistress jealous of Keanu because his wife is not like Keanu's. Uh, I think I've seen Keanu's wife, and I would pick my wife over her every single time, it, whether I was rich or poor. Why aren't more rich people nice then? How do you know that they're mean? You don't ever meet them. They're they're insulated. You never come within their vicinity. Here we are. Just because he's successful and everyone loves him doesn't mean you should hate him. Why should he be loved? We just celebrate... Name the man who invented the television. Go. Without looking it up on Google. Name the man who invented movies. Go. Name the man who invented te color television. Go. You can't. You can't actually... Name the guy who invented... Um, uh, what, what? How about air conditioning? Because we use air conditioning in our room with our TV. You can't. But you can name, you can name Keanu Reeves. Because he was so cool. There's so many actual people who contribute. Keanu Reeves was a celebrity in The Matrix. So you can name him. That's sad. So we, we have a lot of celebrity worship in our society. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily a good thing. Not necessarily a bad thing either. But you can't name all the people who invented your favorite things. You probably name like two of them. And, uh... That's, that's, you know, it's just, uh, we don't, we don't remember the right people, in my opinion. Here we are. Google his wife. She's like 70. No one cares about history. They just care about who won The Bachelor. We're right. So my point is that Keanu Reeves gets all of the celebrity love and attention. And then there's people who really changed the world for the better. And you can't name any of them. All right. You can't name any of them. And uh, that's what our society values, so that's what our society becomes, I suppose. Just because someone created it... Oh, hold on.
just because someone created a TV doesn't mean they are a good person worth remembering. So crypto, first I'd say, just because Keanu Reeves is good at acting doesn't mean he's a good pers pers person worth, uh, I wouldn't say, uh, well, okay, so we're remembering, right? But the reason I used the word TV is because he wouldn't even be a celebrity if it wasn't for the guy who invented television. Uh, you couldn't name the guy who invented the, f the flat screen TV. You couldn't name the guy who made the first theater. You couldn't name the guy who made the projection screen. There are all these massive inventions that occurred throughout time. And none of those guys are remembered. They're all forgotten. But Keanu Reeves was in the Matrix. Ooh, that's pretty good. We really do just worship celebrities because they're somebody who they're not. He's not actually Neo from the Matrix. He just happened to be cast as Neo from the Matrix. He's just a guy. But he gets an awful lot of love. Yeah. Funko has a point. No Jesus, no TV, no Keanu. There we go. Mr. Look it up. Keanu is famous for being nice and friendly, kind and approachable. He gives most of his money to charity. He had a difficult life, lost his daughter, but still makes people happy. I feel like you could probably name lots of people who lost a loved one, perhaps their child, perhaps their brother, uh, did charity, did good for society, and weren't celebrities, but they don't get the worship that he does. The reason he gets worshipped, and the reason bad celebrities get worshipped as well, is because they're celebrities, and that's the only reason. So, I, you know, it's great, good for him that he's done some good things. I really think that that's nice. I would, I want to live in a society full of people who do nice things. So that's great. But the celebrity worship, I hate being told to, to follow along and worship the celebrities. I, I don't actually think what he did was that impressive. Have you ever considered most people could have been Neo from the Matrix? They happened to cast Keanu Reeves. They could have cast so many different people for that role and it would have been the same. You don't know it, but had it never been Keanu Reeves, had it been someone else, you would just think that guy's a really cool guy. You'd be like, wow, remember, remember uh, uh, Muhammad Nazari from being Neo from the Matrix? Whoa, that guy's super cool, bro. And maybe Mr. Nazari would have been the nicest actor ever. You have, so he gets catapulted to success and fame because of the creation that somebody else made, the story of the Matrix and all of the work that the whole team puts into it. But he gets the celebrity status because he's the lead character. He happened to have been cast for that for that show. Now, that's fine. That's just how it works. I get it. That's how it works. But it's just, I don't do the celebrity worship. I don't. You guys can do the celebrity worship all day. I don't do celebrity worship. I don't care how nice he is. He does not get any worship from me. I think Mel Gibson would have been great as Neo. Mel Gibson would have been great as Neo. Oh, last pack. No Ghost Rare in here. Man. And that's cold. All right. Whew. That's for Ryan Shapiro. Jackie Chan as Neo. I would have loved Jackie Chan as Neo. Mister, if I wanted to listen to someone moan, I would have stayed with my wife. <laughs> Well, we're at the end of the stream, so I, I do tend to moan at the end of the stream, but we got on the subject of movies. We are Ryan Shapiro, and anytime you want my opinion on movies, you're welcome to it. You're going to hear the same opinion, though. I think for 90% of the movies, I'll just say that I don't like them. Let me pick the next box, says Ryan. <laughs> I thought Keanu was last year's news. Everyone loves Brendan Fraser now. Yes, Brendan Fraser. Ah, Brendan Fraser. You know, I started to watch that movie, The Whale, and I, I turned it off because I couldn't watch it. I turned it off about 15 minutes. Uh, no, I would say about 25 minutes in, I turned it off. Team America, World Police. Like that one? As much as I like the South Park creators, I watched about 30 minutes of that movie and turned it off. So I actually never watched the ending of it. Here we are. I never actually watched the ending of it. I actually didn't like it. Beatrice Monis, aloha, mister. Can I please get a bulk grade for the Minecraft Hollow Fox card? Yes. Who invented Pokemon cards? Get a my praise. Look, the viewers are back. What happened, what actually happened was there was a lag spike. So there was a lag spike. And that happens. So we get lag spikes. Here we are. 
Oh, look at that. He's got the glow-in-the-dark creeper. That's actually really cool, man. Be careful. You make people jealous with these. You got two Ender Dragons? You're going to have to give me one of those. Here it is, the fox. George of the Jungle should have won an Oscar. My wife, my wife, she said she had a crush on Brendan Fraser as Tarzan. <laughs> yeah, she had a crush on him. You didn't watch the puppet sex scene. Puppet sex scene? There they are. George was in his prime. I think he was actually in his prime when he was in the uh, Mummies movie. He really kind of made that movie. I want to see Baby Yoda as Neo. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Lizzo can be the next Neo. Here's Jeff Leon, one Disney, 100. See, we already forgot about Keanu. I don't wish any ill upon Keanu or anything like that, but I did like the Matrix movie a lot. He did do a good job in it. There we go. I just get tired of listening to people suck his dick, basically. And I will never watch John Wick because I'm not interested in it. Because it's just some, oh, my doggy and shoot a bunch of people. You know what I mean? Actually, you know, I'm not sure I would watch The Matrix if it if it was released today. I'd be like, oh, The Matrix. You know what I'd likely do? I'd likely go read the cliff notes on it and be like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> I'd be like, that's nice. <laughs> Bill and Ted. The rich brother-in-law in the movie, movie Mummies was my favorite character. Whoa, TCC, my virgin ears. Death by Glamour, a good song. Frazier looking like Elvis Presley after a couple of burgers. Here we are. Have you seen Ready Player One? Unfortunately, I did. My wife made me watch that with her, and I hated it. Hated it. It was awful. All right, so next up, we've got Jennifer Yap. Six Packs, night Six Packs Nightmare Before I Go to Bed. You got it, Jennifer. Okay, so the From Nightmares collection. Ugh. There we go. The book is better. The film was crap. There we go. All right. Well, I never watched it in movie theaters because I could already tell that I would hate it. And she had me watch it. She rented it at home and had me watch it. And I was like, yep. It was everything I thought it was. It was... Member Iron Giant? Member Chucky the Doll? <laughs> Member D's? Yeah, it was terrible. Alright, here we are. You know what frustrated me beyond no end for that movie? He gets the girl at the end, and it was just so annoying somehow. I was like, ugh... What's my favorite movie? Okay, so I need time to think because I, I I'm not sure. You gotta name some movies. Um, I should make a list of favorite movies one day and leave it alone. But you know, I actually really enjoyed the Star Wars prequels and the original trilogy. I I like the prequels better. We we recently watched the original trilogy, which was amazing. And then we watched the prequels, and I was like, I'm watching it again as an adult, and I'm like, these are actually pretty well made. Harry Potter, number one. I watched all the Harry Potters. I think it's a very epic movie, Harry Potter. Not a top movie for me, though, but but it's very good. Yeah. Lord of the Rings, yes. Lord of the Rings, original trilogy only, though. Not The Hobbit, and uh, I haven't even bothered watching Rings of Power on Amazon. I know it'll make me cry on the inside. It'll hurt me. Jurassic Park, great movie. Titanic, great movie. These are not top, though. But uh, I would say, yeah, so, so Star Wars, six movies uh, by, by uh, what's his name? George Lucas. Those are definitely uh, on the list of top movies. Spaceballs, of course. Oh, here's one. <coughs> Anchorman. Anchorman would be a top movie for me. I love Anchorman. I must have watched Anchorman like a hundred times. I loved it so much. Super Troopers. That was cool. I liked Super Troopers. Yeah, that was a good movie. Anchorman. Definitely a top movie for me. I could quote almost the whole movie at some point. There we are. Um, 
I'm trying to think. There was the one movie that had the, uh, you know what they call a hamburger in France? A Burger Royale. What was that movie called? Yeah. That was called, it's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't say it. Pulp Fiction? Yes, Pulp Fiction. Oh, Whoa! What? Jennifer! Where's where's uh Kip? We need Kip. Bro, that's the cloud. Wow. That's the signature cloud. Oh my god. Wow, Jennifer snipes the signature cloud. Unbelievable. You know this card ungraded. Just sold an auction for like 2.7 thousand, right? Man. Oh. You know, Kip and Tammy normally open this. And they're going to be kicking themselves because it was in this box. And little old Jennifer here came in and sniped it on six packs. Unbelievable pull. We're definitely going to have to clip that one. Congratulations. Now that's going to go in. Yeah, ungraded 2.7 thousand. This will go into the cool kids box for as long as you want it to, or you can send it off to grade, okay? So, or, or send it home or whatever you need to do. Uh, but we're going to clip that. That's wild, man. Didn't expect it to be pulled so easily. We got the right case, man. So I get the sealed case. Look. Now, I got I to gotta show you something too, guys. Hold on. Let me show you something. Let me tell you something. I got to show you something because I take care of you guys with the good stuff. So we just pulled that. I'm, I'm going to whisper now. So we just pulled that. <laughs> so we got this one too. So we got that there. All right, so what you were looking at there is a master case of the same set that's got two, uh, two of these cases in it. So there's another chance for the cloud down the line somewhere. Whew, so we got plenty of it. Very nice. That's gonna be very popular. Excuse me. Jennifer Yap. You get some crazy luck sometimes, Jennifer. Can't believe how close it was. There's a Beckett Pristine for sale for 10000 Wow, so cool, man. All right, so, so Jennifer, that's going to go in here, and you can have me ship it home to you or do whatever you want to do with it, but this is the Cool Kid box with Cool Kid pulls in it. Here are the pulls. Okay, and this is going in with it. <laughs> the car I don belongs to Kingston. Crazy, man. Thanks, mister. You're probably pretty happy there with that one, Jen. That's like hitting the lottery. Hitting the uh, jackpot on the slot machine. So this all occurred around 326. All right. Wow. Okay. Here's Joseph. If you are interested in immediately selling the card because you're not a cloud fan or something, you can also make an offer to me because I might be interested in it. I bought two cases, no clouds, says Pokey Dan. Do you mind me throwing you a number for the slabs there and you can just decline or accept? Uh, yeah, actually, that would work. You can do that, Mr. Zach. Here we go. Jennifer, now you get these as well. How much for, mister? Well, uh, I would say if the TCG player price is about 1800 I might offer that much. 
Here's Super Dan. One more Disney snipe. Okay, Mr. Super Dan. I never win the lottery. It feels like it. Here you go. Two point four k says Funko. You're saying it's two point four k on on the. Uh... Well, here's the other thing. So if I sit here and I wait, more and more of them will get pulled. So for me, a, a waiting game is also an option. <laughs> Wrath is bidding it up. Eighteen oh one. Well, you know, I I do like to buy cards that get pulled in the live stream. Uh, like the Kabutops. Remember Shining Kabutops? So when, when someone pulls a really precious card in the live stream, I'll, I'll sometimes make an offer on it because, you know, it's cool holding onto a card that we pulled and have a video of it. Here we are. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right, that's Super Dan. Mm -hmm. Someone said it sold at 2.7K. Yeah, I was saying that. Uh, but it, apparently you can buy one on TCG Player now. So like this guy right here, this guy was pulled by me, the No Hollow Dragonite. So when, um, when What's-His-Name wanted to raise some money. <coughs> oh, what is his name? I'm forgetting his name. Wait, who was the guy we pulled this Dragonite for? His name's Dar Von Doom. There we go. Yeah, there we go. When Mr. Von Doom pulled it, he eventually made me an offer to buy it for 16000 and I did. There we go. All right. Mr. Von. It's late. My, my brain was slipping. Okay. That was pretty outstanding. I'm still in shock, says Pokey Dan. <laughs> Corn Rule says TCC graded. <laughs> I'll give it a perfect grade. Good hit for the end of the stream. Would you remember me? Eyes purple crying. That was pretty cool to witness. What would be the most expensive TCC slab? God, I don't even know, man. Um, I think there's a I, I think there's a Charizard tops ten hollow that got graded a ten. So that might be it if he hasn't cracked it and regraded it. I don't think I'll sell it just now. Thanks for the offer. No problem, Jen. You just keep me, uh, if you ever do go to sell, just keep me in mind. All right, so, and I'm I'm just considering it myself, too. I'm not really jumping on it either. Jen, sell to Mr. Uh, Jennifer might want to grade it or something. <coughs> now, here's the thing about grading it, too, though. You know, if you grade it and it comes back 9.5, then I won't want it at all. So there's that, there is that chance for it. Sometimes the idea when you when you sell a card that has not been graded, the idea is that both you and the buyer are taking a risk. You're risking that the card might grade perfect, and the buyer is risking that it might grade 9 or 9.5. So if he pays too much for a card that essentially turns into a 9, he gets killed. But if your card grades really well and uh, you sold it not at the price of a 10, then you didn't do very well, although you still got the money from the card. So... But you know, if I, you know, you know me, I grade everything. So you could send it off and grade, or do whatever you feel like with it. Just uh, keep me in mind because that's the one that got pulled on the stream. It could drop in price dramatically the more cases that are opened. The cloud in a black label is possible. PSA ten, almost certain. No, well, I've graded a lot of. Um, so I've graded a number of the Final Fantasy cards, and that's just not true. So they do grade nine. Uh, and they do grade 9.5, and some of them grade 10, pristine, and I've had some grade perfect as well before. Um, but I would hope Jennifer gets a good grade on it. Drop it to 1700 and the Gengar Marshmallow. Yeah, I still have uh, I still have the Gengar plushies, but... Um, <laughs> you're funny, man. I'd sell it to you for 1800 10% TCG fee, and you'd have to undercut the 1800 uh, okay, I don't know what that means. But to collect it is cool, too. Oh, yes, so Jennifer might just want to keep it, by the way. <laughs> it is cloud, after all. You've got a money request. Okay, so I got a money request by Mr. Zach. 
I got you, Mr. Zach. So I'll have to take a look at those cards very soon, Mr. Zach. So guys, we're all done with the orders. I can see that the queue is empty and it's basically it's 345. So we don't necessarily need any new orders because the stream has uh, reached the three hour point. So we're good at that. She's a girl, so she loves Cloud. I would just trade you for the rest of your Disney 100 packs. You could take $1,800 and do anything you wanted with them. But, uh, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up, guys, and start working on something else, all right? So you guys have a nice night, and we will be back on for the Wednesday stream, okay? All right, see you later, guys. Hey, that's me.